Creativity Talking, episode 115. This is your engineer, Biff Strange. And speaking of strange, we got some feller down from uh, down south yonder there who used to uh, be roommates with both V and the J, so the Vag had an extra G. His name is George Melton, an inventor. And uh, Vince, back to you. Well, thank you, Biff. I appreciate it. And uh, is there any alcohol actually left in the green room? Uh, nope. Okay, so there you go. Jason, how you doing, buddy? I'm fantastic. How you doing, Miss? I'm doing good. This is Creativity Talking with the Vag, and we have uh, our beloved roommate, Mr. George Melton. Well, no, they no need to lie about it. <laughs> Inventor and uh, professional shit giver and uh, uh, web guy, graphic artist, and uh, quite the uh, the debate person, as me and George would debate as we inhaled alcoholic beverages in college, and we would debate nightly, which actually uh, made me form my opinion a lot stronger. Anyway. Gosh, I forgot about a lot of that. Oh, man, that was so good. I used to do a lot of that, yeah. Oh, for sure, and it was never any, you know, like, this show is like, we're, we're trying to show younger people, hey, man, you can, give, uh, you can give people shit, and it doesn't mean anything. That means they love you. Don't be offended yeah. over everything. It's okay. Make a joke. <laughs> Well, I, I actually, I like that kind of environment. I mean, I'm comfortable with that. You, if, if you can't laugh at yourself, brother, you got more problems than, than, than you know. Right, and if you're asking people not to make fun of your group or community, you don't want equality. You want dominion over others. And there is that. There no. is that. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. You know, that's my so opinion. All in. Yeah. You know, and in our house... You know, we, we lived with Scary Sherry, we lived with Rock, Spook was there for a while, and uh, it was like a rite of passage, man. When you walked in the door, you had to be ready, because it's coming. It's coming, that's right. And we'd no work on it all day, oh, George and Jason ain't going to be back for like two hours, okay, and you start like working on it, and as soon as someone comes to the door, you codneck, knuckle dragon, horse fucking... <laughs> House painting, well, fucking chip eating motherfucker. These, these younger kids have got to remember we're from the generation of the blazing saddles. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You know, I think they should re. I think they should re re release that movie. I mean, there's actually an animated version coming out next year. Is there really? Yeah, is it they. As crass as the first one was. They, I don't, I don't know. Uh, they woke it up a little with animated characters, so you can't really pick on a uh, ethnic group. It's more like an animated group, I think. And they're doing, uh, and they're doing a uh, history of the world part two um, television series. But, I heard there's going to be a series on that. Yeah. yeah, with Mel Brooks writing. So, but now in Blazing Saddles, all the different races catch a whole bunch of hell. Oh yeah. And if you watch, if you watch the opening credits, King a Jew K and a black man and several others, Richard Pryor was yep. one of the writers for that script. And yeah, it was Mel Brooks, which is a Jewish fella. Yeah, they I mean, were. There was all tons of different groups in there, and all the groups that are represented in the writers were all given the same amount of hell as everyone else. Yeah, and Richard Pryor <laughs> was supposed to be the sheriff, but he was uninsurable due to his drug habit. So that's how they got uh, the sheriff really? that we all know. Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, um uh Richard Pryor grew up here in Illinois in Peoria, uh at a whorehouse. <laughs> and, and and speaking of whores, George was known as Whore Hey. Or Hey Whore. <laughs> uh, and every time we, we'd go on these like seventeen Fucking hyphenated, you cod neck, liver licking, da 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 da. It would always end with what, guys? Like a motherfucker. Well, yeah, yeah. I've sort of simmered down a little bit since then. Well, yeah, it's only been 30 <laughs> years, you I'm know. Not quite, as, not quite as bad for that as I used to be. But now, and, uh, all things set aside, I earned being that rough for a little while. My life, my life was. Was was a little rocky there for a little bit. Hey, and that reminds me. While while I'm saying that, I want to thank you guys for helping me out when you did. Oh man, no problem. You you, you guys really were the thing that kept me from being homeless for a little while. You really were, and I've thought about that a lot since then. Well, you know, and I had a great time living with you guys and sharing my time with you. 
But let's call a spade a spade right here. You guys really helped me, and I would have been in the spot if you hadn't been there for me. Ah. Oh, no worries, man. You know, it's like at the time, I wasn't a big fan of you. (laughs) No, like when like when you moved and like we weren't a big fan of each other. I don't think. And then I heard what happened, and I had been homeless growing up. And I told Jason, "There's no way he's fucking not sleeping inside a house. We have a couch." (laughs) And dude, within three days. You were one of my best friends for life within like yeah, three days. Yeah, right. Yeah, it took like three days and we was big buzz. That's oh, as soon as like we That's learned right. that we could like give shit on an Olympic level, we were like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Hey, 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 Representing hey, hey, the United hey. States in the shit giving event is George <laughs> Melton, <laughs> Jason Clark, and Vince Custa. Hey, Ten time hey, gold medal winners. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of sleeping on the couch, you remember we when we in homeless. Remember we got that couch. It was on the street. I think some homeless dudes were like using it. And we st- we stole that. <laughs> hey, there's a couch. <laughs> I remember you chuckling about that when we got it. I think uh, they're gonna be looking for something tonight. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that was hey, the ugliest hey, couch, man. Oh my god, it was, it, it was awful. Couch. Yeah. Go ahead, George. I was going to say, you remember the one night before we uh, moved in over there at Vince's, it was over at the hotel. And uh, the, uh, well, the dorms, I guess, the, the college yeah. dorms. Yep. And I got a little more twisted than I was supposed to have gotten. And I, in the morning, I woke up in your bed. Remember that? And his <laughs> ass was sore. And there lays Jason. I can't tell if he's got any clothes on or not. And why the hell's my eye welded shut? God damn it. <laughs> and he just kind of smiles at me and gives me this little flutter of wink, and I'm like, oh my God, let me out of here. <laughs> oh, I like to get my pants full. Oh, oh my uh, God. No, I had that plan, too. Hey, at least you didn't shit your. At least you didn't shit your pants in front of the pulp like some people, but you know, that is so funny. Oh my God, what have I done? Right. (laughs) Finally went too far. Why's he smiling? I've never seen him smile like that. Oh my God. Jason fluttering. Jason doesn't flutter. Yeah. I, was sm- I was over there smoking a cigarette. <laughs> yeah, Jason's like, just like an an uh, kingpin. He's like, hey, you knocked something loose there, tiger. <laughs> <laughs> the only the only way I can see that situation being worse than it was is if he had said, "I took the time to put your pants back on." <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Like, like, oh, I always had you pegged for boxers. Not ah, put some coconut oil on your sack there while you're sleeping. Uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it gets hot down here in southern Florida. Holy God, what shit. A what a time. Well, I got, a, I have a shot here. I don't know if you guys have anything. Uh, George, I don't know if you even drink anymore, but, you know. <laughs> well, right now I'm drinking a uh, Sam Adams winter lager is what I'm up. All right. And and uh, Jason, Knuckle Dragger, Jason what you drinking? on that old... The old schwill there. He's drinking probably some Master Brown. <laughs> God, what, oh yeah. what kind of BR you got the there, Jason? It, it took my stomach 10 years to cure that from, from that stuff. Ooh, God. What are you drinking, Bush Light? Bush Light, yeah. Or is that what you do when you fuck them? Oh, my em? God. Bush Light. I got to put a flashlight on it so I know where to put it. <laughs> this, is my, this is my diabetic beer. I had to switch to light beer when I found out I had the old uh, Big D there. Oh, I didn't know you did. How bad is it? I don't know. I just gave up checking it. I just keep partying, you know what I mean? You know. <laughs> like a man. <laughs> and this is all about men being able to be honest. So, you know, we know guys don't ask for directions. Well, we don't go to the doctor. I still have all my toes currently. So, you know, we're, we're still good. Nice. So it's not that bad. Nice. Right. Yeah. Well, well, this I'll have to say though, for Jason going going to Bush Light, that's that's quite an evolution for for slow headed <laughs> knuckle dragon. <laughs> My God. Yeah, that's I'm drink true. I'm drinking Lagunitas uh, Hazy Wonder, and uh, uh, Lagunita, okay, All right. some yeah, uh, Southern that. Comfort, and I also have because I don't take prescriptions. I have chronic pain uh, chronic pain issues, and tonight I am enjoying. Um, uh, some Kush for Veterans Day. 
George, thank you, sir, for serving. Sir, uh, Kush is a type of marijuana. It, it's le- yeah, it, it's legal here. But all all kidding aside, George, uh, this week is Veterans Day, and uh, we want to thank you for your service, sir. Absolutely, yes, sir. thank you, man. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, that was a, that turned out to be a pretty good time in my life. That probably is where we left off, wasn't it? When when I went in the school. Yep. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you know, I was a tanker by God and drove an M one A one heavy tank. Mm. Nice. I bet that major gonad swell. <laughs> well, yeah, with with your picture right next to the steering wheel, Jay. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Who's this corn swoggler? <laughs> I was at the mailbox every day waiting for my dear John letters. Yeah, we gotta make we gotta make like <laughs> we gotta make like t-shirts for the show like Codneck. <laughs> <laughs> well, cheer, cheers, gentlemen. Here's a uh, let's do a little uh, toast here. Cheers. To all the veterans cheers. who made it, to all those that didn't, and to all those who will serve in the future. Salute. 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 Now, George, you were stationed in Germany, weren't you? I was for two years. Uh, Mannheim, Germany, uh, which is uh, the southern part of Germany. Mm-hmm. A suit. A suit. Nice. Learn some German. It's kind of a bisschen Deutsche Jason, he said, quit fucking the dog. <laughs> That's what I, exactly what I said. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they used to Wait, hold on, George. Sometimes, sometimes you do have to, um, you know, convert it into J language. <laughs> this is what it was like every day at our townhouse. It's no time has passed, and I have to say, out of all the people and groups, you know, kids aside, because everyone with our kids, that's our favorite time. But beyond that. And, like, the people growing up, as far as my adult life, the best time I ever had was with you two fucking guys every night Amen. just having fun. We were broke, but you know what? We had the best time. Oh, we had fun. God, we we had did. Fun. We did have fun. Oh, totally. And if you had told me when we lived together, if you had told me that someday, Jorge, you will eat ramen noodles because you like them, I would have <laughs> laughed in your face. Oh, man. I would have said you oh. stupid shit. There's Dude, it took me t- t- It took me heard. like 20 years to be able to eat like uh, tuna fish sandwiches again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could afford tuna? What the hell? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and not the kind yeah, from the fish tank like us, you used man. to get. Uh, yeah. God, I forgot how much fun we had. Oh, Holy my God. Shit. You know, I even ate that shit on bread. I used to make ramen sandwiches just to try to break up the monotony a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Ramen sandwiches. Holy shit. You can't get more white trash than that, can you, boys? Uh, Holy shit. Okay, so, so Vince, you've got how many kids? Yes, sir. I have two boys. I inherited one, uh, TJ. I came around when he was three. And I made one, Seth, who, by the way, as you and I both know, um, my son and your daughter were born on the same day, same year. I did not know that. Yeah, uh, August 11th. How the hell did I miss that? Oh, we so talked about it once when we were doing the, uh, the movie script that we were sending back and forth. By the way, I have a copy of it, and it is fucking hilarious. <laughs> And it, so, like, at, at the moment of conception, were you guys, like, you know, on the phone with each other? Like, well, right. Jason, the way sex works is you actually have to have it with a woman. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. George, I, I think we stopped doing comics at that point. I don't think I don't think Jason got a, the, the copy of the, uh, the damn Yankees looking for strange adult edition. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, I sent it, but I didn't interpret it into. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so, so George, do you I'm only have? Actually, by the naked woman in the house. George, do you? Well, I did. I, I did have a, a, a pretty lucrative uh, sheep farm for a while, you know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I bet that was the strangest tasting sheep <laughs> that ever came out of a farm. But the leather was really soft. 
I bet, I bet, and I bet the wool was really curly. And hey, hard. Jason, you know those only work as a rubber when you take your dick out of their ass. <laughs> <laughs> what was those Ramses made with real sheepskin intestine lining or some shit? See, oh my God. To me and you, this might seem basic, but to him, that's 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 thousands of years of evolution yeah. right there. <laughs> oh man. Uh huh. Yeah. So so George, uh, okay, so you only have you only have the one daughter. Or do you have other kids? No, I just have the one daughter. Um, she was uh, my favorite mistake. She actually absolutely. We didn't we didn't set out to have her, but that's what happened. Yeah. And it turned out to be a fantastic thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, if you can imagine, she's quite the artist. Much better than I was. Right. No, I get that. My son's better than I am, you know. See, but that makes me so proud. I'm, I'm, absolutely. Bother me. I'm, I'm happy about that. Oh, for sure. It's like, fucking oh. go right on. Yes, sir. That's exactly how I feel. You know, don't be me. Be you, you know. That's right. Right. You know, however so, you do it. And uh, Jace, you have how many? I've got two, a uh, boy and a girl. Um, Jack, he's 14, and uh, Elizabeth will be 13 in January. 14 and 13, wow. Almost Irish twins. <laughs> <laughs> right. Was she awake uh, for the second okay. one? Fair enough. Hmm. Was she awake for the second one, Jay, or... Well, it was it was early morning, and I was you know running a little late for work. So right, I said, "What's another What's another two minutes?" Right. <laughs> Quick, I got ninety more seconds before the microwave dings. <laughs> I win again. You can never beat me. Right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, totally. So, like back in the day, so I was a little older than than uh, Jay and George, and uh, um. So I was a few years older than Jason, closer to George and age. And so And he had this girlfriend that liked to she was really progressive with her shaving. <laughs> and she was the five was o'clock one of the shatter. First women I ever knew that did the Brazilian wax thing with no hair at all. Yeah. Me uh, too. Me, me too, actually. But uh <laughs> Well now that's a little more than I needed to know, really. <laughs> anyway. Like damn, Me smells nothing like George. Tease Vince about her getting a five o'clock shadow of the afternoon. Shatter. <laughs> it was the five o'clock shatter. I'm talking shatter by guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> sir. I'm sorry, Vince. I needed to distract from the point. Oh, there. dude, I'm all go- as long anything for the laugh, you know. I don't care. But uh, and then one time, so one time we really. Tore one on. I don't know you know, if you guys can believe that, us three actually drinking. So one night, George passes out, colder than shit. Now, when he moved in to the townhouse, you know, with, within a week, I don't even know if it was that long, three days maybe, George had a job working at UPS, riding his bike there, boom, and, you know, whatever. We, we didn't, we weren't up his ass about anything, and he did, what you know, whatever. There was no thing. Because a lot of times when you hear that story, there's a thing attached to it, and there was no thing with George. But... Uh, we did like to imbibe in our alcoholic we, beverage. We did that. There is that. Yeah. Yep, so sure George has passed out cold. He's got his Northwest moving hat, fucking twenty five <laughs> degrees to the left. Fucking passed out, and I'm like, Jason. And we had a female roommate in this townhouse. One of them out of five. She had left her fingernail polish out, and it was pink. Oh no! Ja- yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jason, go ahead and finish that story. Yes, yeah, so we pre- we proceeded to beautify you. <laughs> oh, and I was I was beautified, and that's and you can you can very well say I was beautified, huh? Uh-huh. And, yep. And you uh, being hungover and uh, running late for work, you woke up and flew out of the house and <laughs> so went on to work. Right. Went on to work, never looking down at your hands <laughs> until you started noticing some coworkers laughing at you and uh, whispering at each other. Oh my God, I forgot that. Holy crap! Oh my yeah. God! You bastards, you did do that shit to me, didn't you? Yep. Oh yeah. That only, happened. only once. Uh, but yeah, the yeah. funniest part and of the story was George telling us. 
about what happened to him at work. And he's like, I was like halfway through the goddamn day, and I looked down, and there's pink fucking goddamn pink nail polish and all my fingernails. And we're dying laughing already. We're peeing our pants. And for anyone who has never lived in South Florida, and especially work in South Florida, George is working at a UPS thing where I also worked briefly cuz and it was fucking brutal because it's open air and it's 95% humidity 95 degrees and you're really you're and really you gotta sweating move, it out you gotta move, move, move. oh yeah and if you're hung over it's a rough day you it's know, a rough day no matter how old you are you know and even being you know bulletproof at you know 21 or 20 21 you you you'd still had a rough day so george is like so then i got on my goddamn bike like a motherfucker and I had to go down Martin Luther King Boulevard, and he stopped, and he got a gallon. And back then, a gallon of Ernest and Julio wine came in a glass jug. Heavy. Glass jug. So he's riding this yep. piece of shit 10-speed, trying to get away from people who are chasing him down Martin Luther King Boulevard, hanging on <laughs> with pink fingernails and his pinky holding you know, eight and a half, nine pounds of fucking Ernest and Julio Gallo uh, wine and not dropping it. Hey, 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 the, the important part, did I make it home with the wine? Yes, you, you did. There was no alcohol right. abuse involved. Yes. Yeah, that was, oh, my God, that was so funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that, was quite the day. Day. that was quite the day. That was the uh, the... the the year of the wine spritzers you got us on this kick where we were mixing that cheap wine with sprite remember that i, I do remember that <laughs> Spritz. yeah he told me that was my dad told me to do that he he suggested he said we can do that back in the service he said it's pretty cheap and it's a lot of fun so i thought hell let's try it yeah we and did we it because we we're bohawks so up in chicago we'd always did that so the kids wouldn't get hammered here have a spritz <laughs> you know because everyone could have wine on the holidays didn't matter how old you were we leaned on that pretty hard for a while. That was pretty good. Oh, my God. We leaned on anything for a while. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Whatever you could get. That really fucking, that shady Circle K game. that used to be right around the two corners. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, my God. And I remember that one time I had the Saturn, and uh, all you guys came out and asked me if I had someone over because there was a, uh, uh, the dirt was uh, removed from the hood of my car on a specific uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It looked like you'd been screwing someone on the hood of your car. Oh, I just might have been. How about that? Yeah. Well, it's, like, it's like that Billy Bob uh, Thornton movie, Daddy and Them. You guys ever yeah. seen that? Well, yeah, it's like you guys were all hanging in the living room, and my bedroom was literally right next to the living room. So I went to, quote, unquote, walk her out, because no one ever hung out front, because it was dark. Everyone came in through the back. Okay, so that's how that happened. Okay. All right. Indeed. Like, Y'all keep it down with that car hooding out there tonight. Yeah. It's a Saturn. It doesn't dent. Yeah. <coughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. So much fun. Hilarious. So one of, this, one of the things that we do every show, George, is uh, yeah. we have this repeating thing. And on this week's edition of Where's Andrew? Oh, uh, we're looking for Andrew Shenfield because we can't seem to get a hold of him anywhere. Oh, uh, uh, the, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, That's going to cost me, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember Andrew, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, the blonde hair's boyfriend there, what was her name? Uh, L starts with an L. I forget, but yeah, Andrew. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, talking like this a lot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and you got his me. number, and he doesn't answer it, huh? No, we don't have his number. We've we've been trying to find him. We can't uh, find a trace of him on the internet. Yeah, so now it's become a regular bit. Where's Andrew? You know, where's Andrew? Like, yeah, like where's no. Waldo? But. Somewhere in the depths of oh, Hebrew I'll, National Corporation. On a Friday night, I'll tell you how to find him. On a Friday night, put out a, uh, a what do you call those things? The, the cheese, big bombs from uh, <laughs> from Pizza Hut. What do you call those? Uh, Pizza Hut. Uh, Dude, I'm from Chicago. Um, a calzone. Oh, yeah. Put out a big yeah, cheese yeah. calzone and right out front on a Friday evening. He'll find you. That's it. 
Well, yeah, just uh, <laughs> fold it in half. Like inherited the throne of the. Uh, now the trick dog. about a calzone is they fold it in half and it's real warm, so you gotta wait about twenty minutes for it to cool down. <laughs> I remember Andrew. Make I sure you don't get any green peppers in there because they kind of burn. <laughs> the, the, okay, so, so y'all remember Bobby Joe? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Bobby Joe Countryman, yeah. Well, yeah. Bobby Joe used to like the two live crew, and she would sing along with the two live crew sometimes. <laughs> y'all, y'all weren't there for this part, I don't think. You might, Jason, you might have been. But she would oh, sing along all those dirty lyrics with the two live crew, and I remember Andrew going... God, how disappointing. A pretty young girl like you singing along to that trash right there. And I'll, I'll, I'll just never forget the way you looked at it and phrased it. The way it is. A pretty young girl like you, you think she's sweet and innocent singing that trash. Right. <laughs> it blew my mind. Yeah, I'm still... Yeah, I talked to her... Every now and then, on uh, you know, on, on Facebook, yeah, she's on Facebook. She still looks the same. She's got a few kids, married to a fireman. Talk to who? What's that? Bobby Joe. You talk to Bobby Joe? Yeah, here and there. She's on my Facebook. Oh. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's doing a well. Teacher up in the, back in New York again. I'm just connected. Uh, yeah, uh, she's teacher, connected. knows you. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, tell her hello if you think of it, please. Yeah, she was always uh, she was always really cool. <laughs> I had a big crush on her, but yeah, she was always. Stand up, you know. There was never any bullshit oh, for yeah. Bobby Joe. Yep. And she could fucking punch too. Oh yeah. <laughs> she'd oh, she'd fuck it. Yeah. Excuse me. What? Bobby Bobby Joe was a unique girl. She really was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was totally cool. She, she was there. I don't know that I've met many like her. Yeah. She was awesome. I, liked her. I really liked her, but she was very unique. For sure. For sure. Hey, so Vince, you, uh, Jason says you're getting off work when you're right before you do this. Yeah. So what are you doing now? If you don't mind me asking, I'd love to know. Yeah. Well, right now, while I'm kind of say a shift thing, or oh, well, what I'm doing during the day is building the um, the publication company Vaudeville Press, which also does this podcast and another one right. and other uh, things. Yeah. So until you know that usually takes time to build and get a. Um, a regular income in, so I got to do a side gig, so I do catering. All right. Ah, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, and it's literally right down the street. I do three days a week. It pays the nut, and I can do I can write my books and everything else. So, you know. Hey, right on. Absolutely. Hey, cool, cool, good deal. Yeah. Jason, like you're it. still driving a truck, are you? I am. Yeah, I uh, I got off the road, stopped driving tracks and trailers, but uh, now I'm just running a 26 foot straight truck uh, delivering mail to the post offices. No yeah. shit. Yep. Are you union doggone plot <laughs> riding bastard? Non union. Non union. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you're one of few then. Yeah, we're, uh, I actually work for, a, I don't work for the uh, postal service themselves. I work for a contractor, you know, um, oh. a company that's contracted to them. So. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, a, like a truck pimp. A yeah. truck yeah. pimp. <laughs> 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 No, no, see, he works for a truck pimp. He's right, right, right. <laughs> and boy, does he deliver the mail, you know what I mean? <laughs> Special delivery. First load at 3 a.m., and I'm usually uh, getting home at night about 6.30 p.m., so uh, it keeps me oh my. at a Wow, job. man. <laughs> and how many days a week, Jay? Six days a week. You got to stop oh that. God. That's ridiculous. Dude. Yeah, um, tell me about it. I'm getting no it. wonder your knuckles are dragging. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not the only thing dragging these days. What truck? Well, uh, well, uh, that sack's dragging, too. Right. Yeah. Well, Jason I'm clogged the toilet it. again. He created a vapor lock with his testicles. <laughs> I can get like a three-hour break in between the mornings and the afternoon runs. So, uh, you know, oh, it's okay. always nap time. You grab, you know, grab <laughs> some sleep, whatever you can. You know? yeah. Is that supposed to make me feel better, this three hours of consolation bullshit? <laughs> well, yeah. You know. Hey, I, mean, uh, right? I appreciate your hard work, brother. It, it, that's, uh, oh, listen. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a couple of you know ex-wives too. You know what I mean? You gotta right, right. Yeah, keep feeding them. Keep Man, feeding I was them. only stupid once. <laughs> I've had two wives. Oh. My first, 
my first wife I married while I was still in the service lasted about a year and a half. Bad idea. I just, I should, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> nice, nice. But, you know, hey, the second one, 20 years. Wow. Nice. Nice. But I'm, I'm free now and I live in a little cabin down in Dayton, Tennessee. I, when I moved for, when we broke up, when, when I divorced, I'd always, I never did really like Crossville. And I'm like, that's it. I'm making a break for it. I'm running from this little town, but I've got to find somewhere that I want to go. And I found, when I was looking for a place to rent, I found this little cabin right at the edge of the woods in Dayton. And I'm like, Ooh, Ooh. And I went and saw it and I loved it. I just immediately fell in love with it. There, there's a Creek down here. I can hear the Creek from sitting on my front porch. The woods are right behind me. I you mean, notice how it's said, cabin. Jason, it said Creek, not Crick. <laughs> well, yeah, being older makes you do silly shit like that. Right. I should right. have said crack. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been the correct term. But now, George, is uh, where, where is Dayton in relation to to Crossville? Uh, it's about forty minutes southeast. It's just oh, okay. it's, uh, what a uh, maybe forty minutes north of Chattanooga. Okay. All right. And I'm right, right on the river right here. The the uh, the lake is the, the the river is just right there. I mean, I'm five minutes from the river, the big river. Yeah. Uh, and and the restaurant I go to and and hang out at is on the river. So I'm like five minutes from my favorite hangout. There you go. Uh, I used to load uh, when I was flatbed. I used to load a lot of stone in Crossville at that place. I forget the name of it now. Oh, I'm I'm sure I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, big place right there off the interstate. Yeah, because um, there's only two or three of them, yeah. Yeah, and then I would also go somewhere south across, so down there in the woods, uh, up on top of a mountain, but I, I'd have to look at a map to tell you where that yeah. was. But. So the only thing I knew about Dayton when I moved here is that there is actually a town named Dayton. That's all I knew. I, just, I moved to my little cabin, but I love it here. It, it, uh, Dayton is actually pretty cool, pretty cool. And it's that's where the Scopes Monkey Trial was. I didn't know that until yes, I moved sir. here. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry. What was it? The Scopes Monkey Trial. Remember the uh, the evolution in the schools in Tennessee and the big court case over it? Oh, wait, hold oh, on. No, wait, I, it's I, it's, I it's the monkey that. trial. So hold on. Yeah, the monkey <laughs> trial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you think a slow headed Neanderthal would know all about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, there, the, uh, there was a science teacher teaching evolution in the schools. Yeah. And it was a setup. I know that now. The whole thing was set up to be yeah. a big, a big deal, yes. a big national blown up deal. And there's, there was going to be, before it even started, there was going to be news come in. And it was going to be a big trial and blah blah blah. And it, the, the point was to set precedence about teaching evolution in the schools. Yeah. And this happened at the scope that the, the uh, courthouse right down the street from me. Now it's mm-hmm. there was the scope monkey trials. Yeah, there's a great book out about it, and there was a, a movie, uh, Oscar-winning movie, multiple Oscars. Um, I did know that there was an Oscar-winning movie out about it. Okay, oh, I'll yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, do you work from home, George? What are you doing as far as... No. Uh, actually, I worked from home when uh, when I had Chloe, when I first got together with, with Kathy, my second wife. I, I had my own business, and I did websites. I built websites from home, and I did that for about 12 years, and I just, oh, my God, I got so worn out on on clients mistreating you and misunderstanding. And when I was doing it, the web was just coming on, and a lot of these upstanding, you know, uh, citizens and businessmen of the community and people that everyone respects, they had no idea what the web was, how it worked. Right. And they knew they wanted one, but when you would go and talk to them about getting one, they would say, well, all it is is a couple of clicks. Why are you charging me all that? They had no idea. Oh, my God. I mean, right. I that. They had no idea how it worked, what, what they were going to do with it. All they knew is that everybody's got a website. I should have one. Right. And when you try and sell a, a as an old style business person, one of these oh new thing websites, it's a damn nightmare. I'll just tell you. Yeah. And there's nothing <laughs> more. The problem about being a freelance person is that you have to deal with clients. That's it. That is exactly it. And because I just, man, I got, I got over it, man. People are I'm, I'm stupid. Dude. People. people are stupid. And I don't mean to sound rude, but it's true. Like, <laughs> right. 
The people who claim to be the smartest come in and they don't understand. Oh, my God. But they're stupid and they're brazen about it. Yeah. They're stupid and they're going to push it on you and they expect you to be accepting of them and their stupidity. Yeah. And because you're a creative, you either have to work for nothing. We want it to do do it for free or we only want to pay you half. No, fuck you. The price yeah, is the exactly, price. Exactly, exactly. So, that being said, I took a job with a race car parts place down in Rockwood named oh, nice. EPM Racing. Nice. I am the website guy, the webmaster, and IT person for PPM Racing in Rockwood, Tennessee. Awesome, man. It's a pretty cool job, actually. Fuck I yeah. I love being around the metal working. I like metal and everything, so I enjoy being around the, the, the metal and the, the CNC machines and all that. Well, it's fabrication, it's art. You, on a computer screen. Fabri- so. It's fabrication, it's art. You have visiting people in from different manufacturers and all that. Yeah, dude, that's a cool job. It's a really cool job. For and sure. uh, Even though a lot of our clients are really dumbasses and, and they're not... <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. People yeah, hope you're not listening to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Some of our clients are not capable of the work that they're trying to do on their cars. They're just not physically capable of doing it. Yeah. But they're going to try to do it anyway. And when you try to tell them the parts they need, and, and it's it can get messy. But, yeah. hey, it's a great job. It's a great job. So Awesome. <clears throat> That being said, I need to visit the refrigerator. Oh, hey. Anybody need anything? Yeah. Uh, the movie was called Inherit the Wind. Movie called Inherit the Wind. Directed by Stanley Kramer, and it stars Spencer Tracy as Henry Drummond. Uh, Frederick March is his friend, rival Matthew Harrison Brady. Uh, it also features Gene Kelly, Dick York, Harry Morgan, Donna Anderson, Claude Atkins, and Florence Elliott. Wow. Like a play. Yeah, yeah, there was a play. It was a play first, but the uh, the film was actually um, based on the play Inherit the Wind by Jerome Lawrence and Robert Edwin Lee, and it was uh, um, basically um, using it as a euphemism for McCarthyism. They just, you know, kind of... Uh, okay. Yeah. You know, just like... Um, oh, so... I just came out uh, yesterday with a hour and fifteen radio program called "Woke of the Worlds." It's a parody of "War of the Worlds" by H.G. Wells, and uh, I basically flip it on woke woke culture and um, the background. Um, also, even though close to the script, echoes of the uh, pandemic situation we're currently in. No matter which way you believe, it's just like generalisms, you know. Nothing crazy because everyone got really crazy. See how quiet it got? Oh, well, it's, George, George yeah, I recommend yeah. you check it out. It's fantastic. <clears throat> Inherit the wind. I will. I will do that. Yeah. And Woke of the Worlds. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And uh, I play. Uh, work, I play. Work I play, of the world. Woke of the worlds. Woke. Woke. Woke of the world. Yeah. Okay. And I play six. <laughs> I play sixteen different roles. Wow. Cool. Like Eddie Murphy. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Hey, sound effects. Hey, George. Yeah, George, why don't you tell me what's in the refrigerator? Uh, one, what's next Pino. to the butter? I think a, I think a little <laughs> Vino is in order here. All right. Oh, Vino in the fridge. Yeah, man. You codneck. Nice you codneck. Nice wine cooling, <laughs> ice cube making, <laughs> Chevy truck in the backyard. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Dude, so funny. So, so funny. y'all, do y'all remember Johnny Majors used to be a coach for UT? I do not watch any sports at all. This would be a Jason thing. Okay. I'm, I'm with you. I'm not a sports guy myself. <laughs> well, Johnny Majors used to be a, a football coach at UT, which I'm kind of watching the game here while we're doing this. Uh, but he he was known because he liked to have a little nip every now and then, pretty regular. And uh, so to start the story off, Johnny Johnny's starting out early to the game this Saturday, and he's taking the back road so he can get him a little nip of something on play in the game. <laughs> and as he's driving along, he passes this field, and he sees this big old country boy walking through the field, and he's dragging a bear, and he's got a deer slung over his shoulder. And Johnny says, oh, shit, I need that boy on my football team. So he whoops it over to the side right there. 
hops out and he runs over and he says, uh, excuse me there, son. He says, uh, reckon how you got that bear? And the, the boy says, well, sir, he says, I wrestled him down and I hit him on the head with a rock, kind of like this year. And made a you know, whack in motion. Johnny says, well, you must be pretty tough. And he says, well, sir, I've been told that I am. And he says, well, um, how'd you get that deer right there? And he says, well, sir, he says, I run him down and I cut his neck with my knife, kind of like this her, and made a slash. <laughs> Johnny says, wow, you must be pretty fast. And he says, yes, sir, I've been told that I am. And he says, son, do you think you could pass a football? And the boy thought, oh, he was thinking hard there for a minute. He says, Lord, I reckon I could if I could swallow one. <laughs> <laughs> Swaller. Oh, shit. <laughs> so there are you Yankee bastards. There's your there's your redneck joke for the evening. Right, right. <clears throat> so yeah, so speaking of redneck, so growing up. Oh, George. Oh, Johnny Major. That sounds like a porn star name to me. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Majors, you know, Johnny Majors. <laughs> Uh, hey, my name's Johnny Majors. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> you ever have a Hebrew national? Man, I've got a ton of jokes. Ton, ton, ton. Tell them the captain sent you, Captain Schlong. Right. Uh, Remember, he used to call himself Captain Schlong. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Dear Lord in heaven. Nice. <laughs> nice. So, Jason, you said you have no idea where Sherry is. No, no, sure don't. Um, I was know, I was joking around that she. Usual. I was joking around with Jason the other day. I'm like, well, maybe she's like 350 pounds living in Ohio somewhere with like 17 cats <laughs> all named Boo. <laughs> well, she was a Scorpio, so there's no telling. Yeah. That's no, I no, I don't know what happened to her. Or yeah, so. We used to have fun with her old cat Boo, remember? Yeah, yeah. We're uh, we're telling a story God. about the empty two liter bottles and Boo. <laughs> Boo was his name, George. Just Boo. So I so we're talking we're talking about we, visit, oh my god, dude. The floor behind the couch. Oh my god. And all three of us were like, what was his name? Ron was his name Ron or something? We were like, oh, sleep, take our bed, sleep in our room. And he's like, oh no no, I don't want to do that. And sleep in the living room floor behind the couch. I, I'll never forget that. Yeah. yeah. Who was that? Sherry's dad. Remember, he drive down from. Oh the yeah, he was always a nice guy. He was. Yeah. He was, he was a real nice guy. Yeah, yeah he absolutely. Was, he was we had some good talks with him. Too nice. He, he, yeah. Yeah. No, I remember you and me. Yeah. It was, uh, Jason, you weren't there. Me and George stayed up with them late one night, and me and George were just, you know. Yeah. Yeah, slaughtered and and we're just, we just had he was a really nice guy, really you know? nice guy. Yeah. Sure was, for sure. You know, and you know from the, in the world that we lived in, we weren't used to seeing that a lot. So it was like really refreshing <laughs> to have like you know normal yeah. conversation. Made me wonder how Sherry got her things and whatnot. Right, because her dad was real nice. Right, yeah, yeah, Sherry. <laughs> you know, right. <laughs> no, nah, Sherry was okay. Yeah, she yeah. was Sherry was Sherry. You know. Yeah. Hey, I would have if I'd have gotten the chance. But uh, <laughs> no, she was no, she was uh, no, she was really uh, no, she was a pretty lady for sure. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she was attractive. Yeah, and I think she just had some bad, maybe a bad run of a couple of boyfriends there. Maybe you know who knows. You know what I mean? No, there you there you go. That's accurate. Yeah. Once you got past the looks, the brains were questionable. Yeah, and That's she didn't true. hang out either. She just went to her room like it was a dorm, and it was a townhouse. And it's like you know. She probably would have been a lot cooler if she would come downstairs and you know hang out more often. I mean, not that she didn't, but yeah, she did sometimes. Yeah, it was more. After impassive. you guys left, uh, I ended up. Uh, I roomed with her. We we got a swanky place over at. Uh, I was up towards uh, like World Manners. Or, no, it was on. Um, she was a great roommate, room. as far uh, you know, yeah. except for the cats. You know, like never had any. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we never had any issues, really. Yeah. Oh no, 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 no! You know what I mean? So, Jace, you had a place with her after we left? Yeah, I, uh, I lived with her and Jeff, her boyfriend. Remember Jeff Jane? Oh, yeah. Sir Bangs yeah, a lot? Yeah. He used to give her hell. I used to love that. Yeah. Yeah, we had a, we went and got a kind of a swanky place in one of those uh, 
upscale apartment complexes for a while. Like the last year I was down there. Oh, really? Yeah. So that worked out okay then, or? Yeah, it was it was all right for a while. Um, oddly enough, I met a guy over there from a town near mine in New York, and uh, up in the Canada. Out- yeah, it turns out he was a drummer. We got talking in the laundry room one night. We knew, uh, you know, <laughs> he knew the I, uh-huh. guitar player in my band. And, you know, oh, cool. Similar people. So, yeah, a small world. So, we, uh, it's not every day you run into people from the pig skills. Yeah, we ended up being drunk and common. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we were still pretty broke living on rice, white rice and Tabasco sauce, uh-huh. right? So, yeah, right, right, right. We came back hammered one night and threw a pot of rice on it. Of course, we both passed out. And the next thing I remember, I hear all this screaming and yelling, and it was Sherry. She was bitching us out, and the whole apartment was just full of smoke. It looked like a bomb went off. We had, oh, we had, set, God. We had set the rice on fire on the stove. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and man, was she pissed. <laughs> Wow, Dude, it probably she took was. like a week yeah. to get that smell out of there, too. Oh, God. She, uh, now, she wasn't hard to piss off. I'll have to say that. No, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. And you could play with that, too. And then, like, if you didn't want her hanging out, you could just go, meh, meh, and she'd be like, boom. <laughs> hey, speaking of that, Jace, I found another cartoon last night that I drew oh, from back then. Uh, this is uh, Yankees, a frozen instant in composite history. <laughs> And this is, uh, (laughs) oh yeah. Okay. For everyone listening who have no idea, like most people, when you would most, I'm reading this off the very back page. Most people known battle of the civil war was appropriately named the battle of Ridge runners belt. Okay. So what most people don't understand, if you've ever had roommates, okay, you might leave a note. Right? If you're doing some, hey, whatever, party tonight. Da, 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 da. No, 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 no. What we did, George and I, and more George, but, you know, we would, like, all, like, contribute. We would leave full-on comics. Like, four-pagers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, in the adventures of the yeah, damn Yankees and the Codnecks or whatever. You know, like, <laughs> every, dude, the funniest fucking thing. And, like, I tell people so, about it, and they so look good. at me like I'm a fucking alien. I'm like, well, it was an art school, man. We're all creative. It was, it was hilarious. All the time. Yeah, we did comics all the time of, of the life at, at the apartment. Oh, totally. Oh, my God. It was funny because it was the first thing you do when you got home. You check the counter for the comic, you know. That was fucking <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> and what brought this up was Sherry is in the back one of this one, and she's fussing about the battle scene being so messy. <laughs> it's going to take me forever to clean this damn oh place up, she says. Shit, this place is a pork sty. Damn this and damn that. I bet they left the damn air on, too, bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I tried to explain to her. I'm like, I'm like, quit shutting the air conditioner off. It's a townhouse. Leave it on because it won't. Every time you turn it off and it gets real fucking hot in here, you got to crank it. Like, you know, hello. Yeah, you don't really save any energy. Yeah, that's no. Right. You just keep it. You know, it's less to keep it cool. And so she'd get pissed off. And she would come from a job where she worked inside at a mall. And all of us were working outside doing live performance or, you know, in transportation or whatever. You know, we all had outside jobs that we were doing. We were busting our humps, yeah. Yeah. We didn't have a lot of money, but we had the fucking most fun, like, ever. It was so fun. Yeah, that was... I was driving today, and I'm thinking about this podcast. I'm like, oh, my God, you know, it'd be hilarious. A fucking, um, what do you call it? Uh, A reality show where... Us three are like thrown together and we have to roomie again in like a fucking cabin somewhere. That would be fucking hilarious. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I, I can see that. You know what I mean? They're just like funny let's all the inside have a jokes. Lot of fun with this. Let's 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 take it on out there that outer edge and have some make room for jokes that we couldn't make any any other way. Let's say that the QAnon takes over the government and we're, we're all <laughs> running for our lives. And we wind up in this cabin in the cat guts, and we have to roommate again in the cabin, and it's like survival, you know, apocalypse kind of thing, only it's us three. Yeah. Right? Yeah. See, we can make jokes that way that we couldn't make any other way. 
That's right. Yeah, you know, and, and here's the whole thing. You need to, if anyone says you can't joke about something, double down. That's bullshit. Yeah, they're, they're not paying attention. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's speaking truth to power. That's what comedy is. And some people have mm-hmm. power and they don't like to be challenged on it. You know what? Check your privilege. Yep. How's that? You know. Well, see, lots of times bullshit doesn't like to be questioned, but the truth doesn't mind it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like the best thing in the world to me yeah, is people having a conversation. Because it gives them a chance to be clearer and to clarify their position. Yeah. Well, lies and bullshit don't like to be questioned because they don't know what to say. Right. right. You know, like George is a religious man and I'm a fucking heathen. So we would sit down <laughs> and we'd have these long thought out really like it's too bad those discussions weren't recorded because that would make a fucking fantastic book just in mm. general you know it what really i mean but we I never mean. really we never faulted each other for their belief it was a discussion yeah. it was an no, ongoing discussion it's because we were both curious yeah. you know what i mean and i still know to this day i mean what you believe is is your right as is mine right Absolutely. And in, in fact, my belief tells me that I should not be judgmental of other people. So how could I tell you that my belief is good and then be judgmental? How could I be both of those things? I shouldn't do that. Exactly. Like I talk, you know, I talk to other atheists and they're militant and I'm not that way. I'm like, I, hey, if it helps you through the day, right on. It's, <clears throat> it's just not for me. I have my own different ways of whatever getting to that, whatever thing is that you get to. It's just different. Right, right. You know what I mean? So yeah. no need Speaking to poo-poo Andrew, shit, you know. I asked him one night. I said, Andrew, I don't mean to offend you, but I know you're a Jewish fellow. And he says, I am. I said, well, I don't really understand the Jewish faith. Let, let me let me clarify. In, in the Old Testament, you made sacrifice to appease your sins. He said, right. I said, but you don't believe in the New Testament because you don't believe Christ was the Messiah. And he says, correct. I said, well, but you don't make sacrifice either. What do you do? And he says, well, we don't really do anything. <laughs> that was his answer. Well, I can. Uh, I mean, what do you what do you say to that? I'm like, well, I can okay. probably right. bet that right. Andrew was not practicing. That answers my question. <laughs> but uh, you know, to each their own. And you know what? I, I mean, I you know, I just wrote. Well, you know, reboot Jesus is coming out, and that's a story about an atheist who writes a story reboots the story of Jesus, but he's a writer. He's true to the story. Now, even though I don't believe in the outcome of the story, I believe in the story because the story is good and it resonates and there's a reason for it. So this is what this atheist does in the book and he gets totally destroyed when all he's doing is actually protecting the story from the people who are in line with what they quote unquote think are followers of Jesus. And they're like putting all this bullshit on him to change it into this, that, and the other. When all he's doing is updating it and putting a new cloth on top of it. Right. And he gets totally destroyed without anyone reading one word. You know, that's the world we live in right now. People need to calm sure. down. People need to have, you know, conversation, you know, yeah. like if, if, if there's, if there's anyone to blame, for Christians following falling away from the church, it's the Christians themselves. For sure. sure absolutely. They, they preach forgiveness, and they're some of the most judgmental, mm-hmm. uh, yackety, gossiping, picking people that, that I've ever known. Oh, there's no one more judgmental than Catholics, and I grew up Catholic. Well, I don't know. The Baptists are pretty bad. I grew up in a Baptist. Bad. Well, the Catholics hey, kind of like turn the other way fishing, while 75,000... talking about this, if you're going fishing, yeah. don't ever take just one Baptist. Because if you just take one, he'll drink up all your beer. Always take two, so they'll be looking at each other and won't drink any of your beer. <laughs> all right. Hey, George. <laughs> hey, I... I... <laughs> Never take one Baptist fishing. Don't ever do Holy it. Holy hey, shit. Drink up every damn beer you got. I got, I got one to, to play off there for you. Yeah, I, see, I John the Baptist like wasn't actually, ago. like, you know, Lutheran. blessing people. He yeah. was actually hiding his beard. Okay. all right. So, uh, you, you know the difference between a Baptist and a Lutheran? <laughs> oh, God. No, I don't. I'd love to hear the difference. 
Uh, the Lutheran will talk to you when you see him in the liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> see, I heard that only with the Methodists. I heard the Methodists. <laughs> nice. Nice. So, so this guy dies and he goes to heaven. And uh, St. Pete says, ah, you're finally here. Let me give you a tour. And so he's showing him around, and he takes him down to this hallway. There's this big, long hallway. And he says, now, we have some groups of people down here. And uh, there's doorways. And he he starts leading them down the hall. And they start coming to this first door. And the guy's smelling cigar smoke and hearing this awful ruckus. He's like, what the crap? So they open the door, and the, these people are smoking cigars, and they're drinking liquor, and they're playing bingo. And he says, oh, yeah, that's the Catholics. They always have a big time. So they shut the door, and they go on down a little bit. And, and he starts smelling this wonderful heavenly food smell. And it's like, oh, my gosh. And the awful is clanging and clattering and chattering. You ever heard? They open the door, and it's the biggest, longest covered dish supper you ever saw in your life. And he says, that's a Methodist. He says, if you're mad, it's all you need to get into heaven is a covered dish. So that's it. So he closes the door, and they start going on down the hall. They, they get to the last door in the hallway down there, and he says, now you got to be kind of quiet down on this end of the hall. This is Church of Christ. They think they're the only ones here. <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh, man. Nice. So uh, Princess Diana... Right, she gets in the car wreck, and you know, boom, she's in heaven, right? And she's walking around, and um, and of course, Mother Teresa had passed away briefly before her, so she's like giving the tour, you know, she's like, you know, okay, and here oh, yeah. go, and this, that, and the other, and blah, 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 you know, and uh, Mother Teresa gets pissed off and leaves, you know, Diana standing there, and she goes to talk to St. Peter. She's like, dude, what the fuck? He's like, what's the matter? She's like, really? She's like, I opened this thing in India. I helped all these homeless children, all these children no one wanted, the, the unloved, the unwashed. The set and the, I did great things all around the world. She poses for a few pictures. She takes, you know, she takes, um, uh, uh, she gets a Nobel Peace Prize. She makes a couple appearances on television. And by 30, boom, here she is, and she's already got a halo. I, she's like, I think I've done more work than she has. And so... St. Peter bends down or, and says, uh, Mother Teresa, that's, uh, that's a steering wheel. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> oh dude. Now let's not get carried away. <laughs> <laughs> hey, leave it to the atheist to wreck that whole thing. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, I, live, I literally live... I- <laughs> Right. If you'll pardon the pun, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Look, and my skin's not even burning. So I I lived. Ha <laughs> ha. So I lived like three blocks. I lived three blocks away from the English embassy when Princess Diana had passed away. Dude, it was the coolest thing. Like tens of thousands of people, flowers, people jamming, playing music, uh, news was everything. Dude, it was kind of really cool. There for a minute. You're three blocks from what? The uh, um, the U, uh, England um, the embassy for England. Oh. Oh, 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 okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so everyone went there who was English in an, and in LA. There's a lot of English filmmakers and everyone else, and so they all went there and like, you know, they had this huge celebration of. It was really cool to see. You know what I mean? I bet. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. But there was another time, so I guess this is like in five years' time. You know the Pope who's hiding, the German guy? Oh, yeah, John Paul. Yeah, so, so okay, so John Paul and President Bill Clinton both passed away at the same day, right? So, mm. boom, all of a sudden, Clinton's in heaven, right? And he's like, oh, this is pretty cool. And the Pope is it. <laughs> That's what he would say. Yeah, yeah. and the Pope is cool. in hell, and he's like, hey, whoa. What's going on? I'm the Pope. I'm the Holy See. What's going on here? Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, goes to the administrator, boom, right away. And he's like, hey, what's going on? He's like, oh, man, paperwork got messed up. It's 4.59. We close at 5. You know, you're going to have to wait till the morning, and then we'll send you back up. I'm sorry about the problem. Um, we'll put you in a room that's air-conditioned, uh, you know, so you won't feel any of the heat. Uh, we do apologize, and, you know, oh, thank you. Have a nice day. Oh, my goodness gracious me. So... <laughs> The next morning, there's the escalator going from hell to heaven, right? And Clinton's coming down. The Pope's coming up. 
And the Pope's like, all my life, I've been waiting to meet the Virgin Mary all my life. And Clinton goes, oh, you're about 24 hours too late. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, Vinny, oh, God. <laughs> okay. Oh, my word and honor. <laughs> okay, George, growing up in Tennessee, what was that like? Uh, well, growing up in Tennessee, I lived on a dead-end road with a big lake at the other end. So we would ride our – it was about a mile to the lake. Uh, City Lake was its name. We would ride our bikes down there and fish all the time. Uh where the uh, water drained off from the dam made another little area that nobody knew about behind it called the Devil's Kitchen. That was some waterfalls and some cliffs and some things. It was really nice, and we would go there and play all day long. <coughs> so we would ride our bikes and go fishing and, and whatnot all day in the woods and the creeks and streams almost every day. Okay. Now, wasn't yeah, wasn't I'm taking my medicine too? Oh, no worries. So, how many kids are in your family? You have your brother, correct? Yeah, in my, in my family, I just had my brother. Okay, but the the generation before me, all of them were like eight or ten kids apiece. Right. Mm. Well, yeah. <laughs> there was no TV back then. Nothing to argue over. <laughs> Not well. There was shit to argue over, but it was different. You know, honestly, I remember getting color television. I remember that. Nice. When Dad brought a, when he brought a. And Jason, that doesn't mean Sanford and Son. That means you know color TV, like all the colors. Oh my God! No, damn it! Red Fox was a brilliant, brilliant fucking comedian. That guy was. Oh my God! We used to listen to all his albums growing up. That guy. Don't forget to wash your ass. <laughs> oh my god it's hardcore, man. so but george wasn't your dad was, was, it, was it 18 or 20 i think it was a i think it was a 22 inch actually color television well that was a big one it was a big damn deal man yeah because oh, like yeah. 19s were like the you know yeah, we had an 18 inch black and white and that's all we had and right. you know who the antenna was george goes in there things around a little bit right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is thunderstorming outside. We well, don't hang on to it very long. Hurry up. <laughs> Put your arm in the air. Okay, stay yeah. there. Yeah. Take this aluminum foil with you. Yeah. <laughs> this is gone with the wind. It's only three hours. You'll do great. <laughs> now, wasn't your didn't your dad um wasn't he involved in politics? Dad at one point was state representative uh he was uh the state representative for this area the fellow that holds that position now is cameron sexton and they've changed the the voting lines a little bit his counties at the time were different than they are now <clears throat> but, but yeah he was a state representative wow cool and how long did he serve for he served one term and I'll tell you my first lesson of politics about that and how people really are. We have, uh, well, we had, when I lived there, up at Crossville, a resort area called Fairfield Lake. And all the Yankees <laughs> would move down there with their Yankee money and because their money was worth more in Tennessee than it was in Detroit. They would think they were royalty. And they mistreated the locals. They were shit asses. They were really, they really were jackasses. And yeah. as much fun as I had giving you guys hell, that's where that all started from, is Fairfield Glade and those jackasses. They actually petitioned the city council for their own checkout at the Walmart. Really? Yes, yes. Wow. The locals couldn't use this checkout that they had in vision. Man, those Democrats are insane. He must be a card-carrying uh, <laughs> Fairfield Glade, uh, Glade uh, to use this. Wow. Thing. Yeah, that's bullshit. <laughs> But here's how it was. Cross, Crossville was dry at the time. And a representative from, so, well, I, let's just say some of the people in Fairfield Glade, where my dad was in office. They oh, for people, listen, for people listening, they might know what it might not know what a dry county is. Uh, no, that, no liquor in this county. Okay, so in order to get liquor, you would have to what? Go to another county. 
You would you buy get, it anywhere le- legally? You could not buy liquor in this county, but you could possess it. You know, I don't know, probably, but probably not on <laughs> Sunday or something like that. <laughs> that. That never came up. Anyway, they came and they told Dad. They said, "Hey, we want liquor by the drink." And Dad said, "Well, you know, this county has progressed pretty good. It's it's come a long way since it's okay. Then I'll get liquor by the drink for everyone." And Fairfield Glade said, "No, no." Just for Fairfield Glade, we want them to have to. We want everyone to have to come out to our retirement community if they're going to drink liquor. Dad says, "No, no, 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 no. You guys are from out of town. This is this is local thing here. If you get it, everyone gets it." And they said, "No, we don't like that." Well, there was a fellow running against Dad named Peabody Ledford. <clears throat> Never forget that name. It's the damnedest name I ever heard. But Peabody told the people from Fairfield that he would give them liquor by the drink if they voted for him, and so they did. Fairfield Glade voted my dad out of office so that they could have liquor by the drink, and Crossville could not. And that's how it was for decades in that county. Fairfield Glade could have liquor by the drink, and the the pubs in Crossville could not because that's what Peabody did. The, The point being, my dad was too honest to be a politician. Yeah. 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 It doesn't work, does it? Yeah, it, you know. No, no. He said, sure, if you want liquor by the drink, that's fine, but everyone gets it. And they said, no, we don't want that. We want everyone's money. So, Right. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so that was my first uh, experience with politics. <laughs> nice. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hold on one second, guys. I got to do a little, uh, I got to do a little sponsor thing. Yes, sir. Round Dial Theater presents Woke of the Worlds, a satirical parody written by Vincent Kostosh of the 1938 radio play that shocked the world and scared a nation, exposing a societal flaw. Available now on vaudevillepress.com and wherever you hear creativity talking with the badge. Vaudevillepress.com. All right, thank you, guys. Nice. You know. You know, someone texted so, me. She's like, "Hey, are, are you doing other voices?" I'm like, "Yep, like sixteen of them." <laughs> <laughs> hey, the, uh, who played uh, Phyllis? I could care less. Oh, shout out to Rhonda Klug. She's hilarious. She does. Um, uh, yeah. She has this thing called Resurrected Goods, where she um, refab- uh, refurbishes um, furniture. And has all types of fun stuff, horror related and non horror related. Works with interior designers and also does improv work. And she's just hilarious and a solid, like really good human being. She's awesome. So shout yeah, out to Ron. She, she did a great job in that. It was awesome. Oh yeah, Phyllis, fucking. And that was um, so every year. My friend Phyllis on Facebook, um, we do real evil evil comedy. Like you guys could relate. So. We do just e- evil shit to each other, and so like every year I do a bigger and better like birthday video. And this year I wasn't able to do it, and I was going to do something else. And so anyway, so I changed it to Phyllis could care less because I was late with her birthday. So that's how. <laughs> little little shout out to uh, Phyllis, fucking trollop. <laughs> And I mean that in the best way. It's fucking great. She, she's to me, she's funnier than Lucille Ball. She's she's just hilarious. But I saw she jabbed you on Facebook uh, recently. It cracked me up. Something about uh, Vince shocked that a woman actually noticed him. Some kind of crack like that. I thought. Oh yeah. Oh dude, there's yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 And the shit like people were like would like you know private message like hey man you're being pretty rough i'm like oh dude we're totally joking you should see the stuff that we fucking send each other privately we're like you fucking ah. you know what i mean you know it's like like five minutes after my dad died she's like oh quit crying you fucking pussy you know shit like that you know and to me that was the funniest fucking thing at the moment you know what i mean Right. Like right, that right. was totally like only you know people you really know can like give you shit in that time and, and like get away with it yeah, because they want you to lighten up a bit, you know, and that's fine, yep. you know. Yeah, exactly. Right. But yeah, that was hilarious, man. Oh my god, the shit that we've gone back. And it turns out we actually worked together at the same. So me and Ray 
my brother Ray and her brother and Phyllis all worked at the same production company at the same time in LA. Oh, wow. Yeah, but like, like Ray was on her show and like I was on a different show and yeah, it was pretty funny. But huh. yeah, that's where we used to run into uh, Mil- Mr. Uh, Alex Trebek every every morning. Oh wow! Yeah, we were, uh, right, we were right next to Jeopardy, so that was fun. Oh yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, hilarious, you know. But uh, you know, hey everybody, if you like the show. You can buy us a cup of coffee or you can subscribe monthly, various levels. You get free swag with your levels. There'll be books, merchandise, T-shirts, all type of fun stuff. What? Yep. Behind the scenes stuff, all types of goodies, you know, but uh, don't worry. None of those will include any naked pictures of me, Jason, or George. Thank God. Right? Right. Yeah. Well, George might be able to. He's like probably closer in shape to any one of uh, us, a fucking am- amoeba looking middle aged hey, men know, with beards. Round is a shape, too. Man. Hey, that, yeah, that's absolutely right. right. The circle is a shape, too. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You know, and when I had to start shaving my head, well, I shaved it because my sister got leukemia. So, but anyway, so in order to, to get him, like, oh, got a nice shaped head. You know, some people, you look at them and you're like, whoa, mama squeezed too hard. <laughs> You know, they just got this way abnormal looking thing. So, you know, every morning, I thank Michael Jordan for making bald cool. Thank you, Michael. Oh, yeah. Just had to give a shout out. You know, some people pray to Jesus. I pray to Michael Jordan. <laughs> so speaking of... So, George, everyone got quiet there. Oh, yeah. Oh, what's going on here? So... Uh, the invention. Tell us about it. Yeah. Now well, George is a fucking smart fucking guy, and when he laid this thing. all out, dude, I, I was like one of your first subscribers. Fucking mind blowing. I, I really? Yeah. Yeah. I still, I still couldn't understand it. I was like, well, because you're stupid. Like, yeah. Well. <laughs> 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 right. No, I used to work with motors all the time and different applications and special effects and stuff, and we're always figuring out what can move what and, you know, da 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 all that stuff. So one of the things in my areas of interest in my spare time is looking into this type of situation that you found yourself in, George. Well, it's, it's uh, I'm, I'm sure you, or you're aware then that I'm actually, I have a patent on this thing. Yes, sir. Uh, that was quite a bit of trouble. But the the this is not my first invention. My first invention was stolen from me. So, so I the first you, sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I had a show run on MTV for seventeen years that I it, came up with. So I feel you. That's why we can't have nice shit around here, right? <laughs> Dang it, George! If you listen closely, you can hear Jason's knuckles fucking dragging across the vinyl. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just thought the Barons were going out in air conditioning <laughs> fan. I just okay. Oh my god. I wear roller skates on my hands these days. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, uh what it is, I actually just about every backyard uh inventor or one that would invent would invent something is has thought about what I've done. Right. Uh so just a simple magnet like you would hold in your hand, you, when you, when it pulls things, when it attracts things to it, you think as, as a guy, you think, well, I need to be able to figure out a way to use that, you know, more efficiently or maybe use it mechanically or even, gosh, use it in a big way. Yeah. Well, I figured out how to do that. Um, now, the magnets I used are not, are not regular refrigerator magnets they're right. rare earth magnets in fact they're neognium is what i use yeah. and the the uh, the standard ones that i played with were about an inch and a uh, half wide by about three inches long and about a quarter inch thick yeah and people don't know the cost of an actual magnet like you're talking about because we used to work uh, with magnetics a lot in special effects and they're fucking pricey but they it's a totally different being 
Well, th these ones here, because they were molded, were not that bad. They were like uh, $4 a piece, I think, something okay. like that. Right. So they weren't that bad. Gotcha. But the pull strength on them, a case two pull strength, I think is right, was 50 pounds. So they're really, really strong. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but what I discovered in a nutshell, let's nutshell this thing. When, when a magnet pulls something towards it, it wants to hold it there. It doesn't want to move it on past it. It wants to hold it there and make it be still. So that's the trick. When when it pulls away, the magnet takes as much energy away from its movement as it gave to it when it came this way. So the trick is to keep the, the strength that it used to pull it here, but lessen the strength that it requires when it the, the object leaves. Does that make any sense? Am I getting anywhere? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> so this this discovery was almost by accident, not quite, but almost. Uh, I had an investor at this point, and everything I had tried miserably failed. It, it just wasn't right. I wasn't, and what I know now is I wasn't even in the right train of thought. I wasn't even thinking in the correct way. One of the biggest challenges of this this patent was thinking was trying to, was I was I was overthinking it. I was thinking way too hard. Keep it simple. Oh, yeah. To get to where I needed to be, I needed to think like the fifth grade science experiment. Yeah. And that was the hardest part for me. Now, that's to break the technology. Once you break it, then you can start getting complicated. But to break the technology, you've got to think really simple. So I got mad because nothing was working. And I threw one of the magnets and it broke in half. Mm. And I looked at the magnet and I'm like, wait a minute. Think about what the flux just did. Right. Now, the field around a magnet that makes metal attract to it is called its flux. Uh, and I know that everybody thinks float capacitor from the, the back to the 80s. Marty, no, we need a flux capacitor yeah, Marty, to get back no, to this, the future. <laughs> this, this, a, a, a magnet's field, attraction field, is called its flux. Yeah. And it's... it's it turns out it's palliable. You can you can reshape it. You can make it and you can make the shape different. So when I stacked one half magnet on one end of the larger one, it changed the shape of the whole flux of it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It added it, it. It took the shape of the flat magnet, the flux of the flat magnet, and and put it like an earlobe on it. But now that changes the way that things react to it when it comes around and when something is attracted to it, the force that's attracting it is larger than the force that it escapes from. So the difference so now between you have the front access and the back is really what you're gaining there. So now you have access, now, access here, energy. Here, here's the real nuts and bolts. Here's what I really discovered. That even though the magnetic pull from the front side is more then the magnetic pull from the back side, it doesn't pull away from the front side when it moves to the back. There's no loss there. Oh. You see what I'm saying? There's your gain. There's the secret right there to the whole thing. Okay. <clears throat> because if you use one magnet and try to go to another magnet, it will the first one will pull away. See what I'm saying? It will pull it and will you'll take lose, away from the inertia. And you'll lose all that extra you lose the energy that you gain. Gotcha. But if you use one single flux field, it doesn't pull away when it goes to the smaller flux side. Nice. There we go. That's what I meant to say. Right on. So the difference between the pull, and see you have a greater pull on the front than you do the back, but there's no loss in the exchange between the two. There so, you go. That's it. And that's how you make excess so, energy to run. Okay, so explain to this in practical terms for the walking um, public who okay. probably didn't understand half of it, but I mean, I, I did, you know what I mean? Like, okay, I'm like, the, yeah, uh, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But people are like, well, well, what does it, well, what does it mean? you don't understand, you start talking. Yeah, but what does it mean? <laughs> That's just something about Vince. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, right. What, is it, what does it mean to the layman? Does it mean... A more efficient refrigerator? Does it mean 
Yeah, like what were some applications be for it? Yeah. <clears throat> Anything with a central uh, axle or drive shaft, I can get. And it, just in my experiments in my backyard, in my little shed back here, anything that I put to it, I can get a 30% increase in efficiency. Anything. So we're talking anything with an engine. Anything with a drive shaft. We're talking about tractor trailer trucks where the, the trailer actually helps haul the load. We're talking about helicopters that can fly 30% further on the same amount of fuel. We're talking about electric cars that now can go 30% further on the same battery charge. Wow. Okay. So wow. now the question that everyone wants to know who's like, oh, wow, that'd be a great thing to invest in. What does that mean to the profit margin of all these things? Uh, yeah, profit margin of what? Let's say um, because there's a, a trucking. To let's that. say a trucking line. Huh? Let's say a trucking line. Oh, that'd be uh, huge for yeah, trucking. <laughs> Absolutely. See, so, yeah, yeah, ask Jason if you had if you could go thirty percent. Jason, if your truck could go thirty percent further on the same amount of fuel that it does right now with no more fuel than it takes to run it, how big of a deal would that be? That'd be huge. Okay, you Jason, know, what do you what do you spend okay, average it per year oh. putting fuel into your truck? Well, I mean I'd have to figure that out, but I will tell you most trucks on average get around probably average between four to six miles per gallon. Um, some of the newer ones, they, they claim they can get up to seven or eight. That, that may be true in some cases, but, um, but still like that's, that's top of the scale usually. Wow. So you figure like tr the larger trucking companies that have maybe three or 4,000 trucks running, you know, every day. I mean, that, that would be, you know, and of course the price of diesel, you know, going up now, it's, uh, you know, it's probably $4 a gallon in some parts of the country now. I mean, I, I so I like how many gallons do you, so how many gallons do you average per month? Oh, Ish, geez. just a, a, a uh, top of the. You know, you don't have to figure load. it out. Yeah, yeah, a huge amount. Um, I'm trying to think. You know, the last company I worked for, we were a smaller company, about a twenty-something truck outfit. Um, boy, I tell you, off the top of my head now, it's been a few years. I couldn't even gallons. I, I used to know these things. But, how many gallons I mean, per day I, do you go through? <laughs> Let's keep it simple. How many <laughs> gallons per day? Per day, I, I mean, I, you know, when I was running, I would I would fuel up probably every other day, and that would be you know three hundred gallons at a time. I had two hundred fifty gallon tanks on the truck, you know. Okay, so, so. two fifty times three. No, let's make it four because it's a week, so they're always running. So you have a thousand gallons. Now thirty percent. So that's three hundred gallons. Yes. Per truck per week access. At what, three dollars a gallon? That's twelve hundred dollars per truck, times twenty. That's if you're going, if you're running diesel trucks, not the companies that are running the new electric trucks or are coming on with that. Yeah. That's twelve hundred dollars per truck per week, based on a thousand gallons per truck per week. So, multiply. <laughs> so you have a company that has a thousand trucks times three hundred. That's three hundred thousand gallons per week saved. <clears throat> That's amazing. Uh, the the rough math on this, Vince, is this is a hundred billion dollar. Right, but I, the people want to know what they're saving. So that's but, how I but, think you said so. You but know. when you start talking to the engineers, you run into problems because in engineering school, they teach the engineers that what I've done is not possible. Right, yeah. right. right. Well, yeah. Like once, so, you know, I used to work at Honda way, Parts. When you start talking to your engineers and you say, hey, this fellow says he can do this and this and this, the engineers say, well, no, it's not real because we learned in school that you can't do that. Oh. They can't, and all the ones I've talked to, and I've had some ridiculous arguments. Oh my God, I've had, oh shit, nay, at the arguments I've had thrown at me over this thing. Oh, I can believe I it. Had a, I had a, I had a, I had a physics teacher one time tell me there are no, there is no more energy in a magnet than there is in a mailbox post. Huh. 
and and I wanted to say, well, my first reaction, and this is kind of funny, you'll get a kick out of this. My first reaction was, well, then how's it holding up the mailbox? <laughs> but I didn't right. say that because that's a whole different discussion. I thought, well, you know, when I set my mailbox post on fire, it burns and releases uh, heat and uh, water moisture, and it turns to coal and ashes, and then it will not hold up my mailbox after that. So, you know, actually my mailbox post has energy in it. But (laughs) all that aside, what it really comes down to is does the magnet attract metal or does it not? I mean, really, it's as simple as that. If it attracts the metal, then my idea works. If it doesn't attract metal, then the whole thing is falling. Right. Mm. That's wild, though. Then the, gov- guess, the government would then come in. in. flux so that it doesn't work like it used to. And honestly, Vince, I, I did the thing that humans are best at doing. I took something that was perfect in nature and I made it as a human, I ruined it. I made it imperfect. <laughs> nice. So that being said, now we can use it for working applications. That's great. So three <laughs> 300,000 gallons times 52. <laughs> That's a lot of millions of gallons saved. And that's one operation. Right. Right. Just one industry. Yep. Now, no, let me let me in, let me intrigue you. A you little need bit. to let talk to our in. boy Elon. Huh? You need to talk to our boy Elon. Uh, he ain't got time for me. Anyway, so imagine a you know George that could run. When I was uh, working at a software company in the nineties, yeah. after. Uh, rehabbing for my career-ending accident where I couldn't lift 100 pounds and run with it. I was working on how to do credit card payments over the internet. And this, I would talk to this guy all the time in Malibu who was out of a garage and his brother doing this little thing called PayPal. Oh, really? Yeah. So, Elon is totally approachable. <laughs> <laughs> well, for you, maybe. Dude, you should call him for me. I'll give you a cut. What? Right on. I'm just saying. Yeah, I think you're the thing that you have going on is so mind blowing, and people don't get it. And no, some they people, don't. And it's so, too simple. And some it's will refuse. Too or they make it too complicated. And some people right. refuse to get it, even those who preach follow the science. But there's this thing called scientism, where people stop where their beliefs do. Oh. And in science, yes. you have to yes. have an open mind. Because how else are we going to solve this? Here's a solution right here. Angry okay. angry Swedish girl screaming at everyone. <laughs> Here's a solution. Here's a stopgap till you figure it out. You know, this is a lot of savings, a lot of cash savings, a lot of labor savings, a lot, you know, it goes all down the line. Why not? Well, it would, it would help a lot of people make their green tags, if you know what I mean. Right, so... People who are interested in investing in this type of thing or finding out more about it, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, well, my email is george at bluegranitemedia.com. And on YouTube, they can check out your your video where you explain how the technology works. Is that? I, I have my own channel. That's correct. There's only four or five videos on it, and they're pretty short. They're like four minutes a piece, yep. four or five. But yeah, there's a few on there. And, and, how, uh, and how do they get to that? Uh, when they go on YouTube, search for Kinetic Energy Amplifier. Nice. I just I wanted to make sure that people were able to find you if they're hearing about this and they're interested and they can go right now and check it out while they're listening yep. to the rest of the podcast. Sure can. Dude, that's amazing. Like you're talking so let me, about... Let me, let me pick your interest a little bit here. Having a little bit of a military background, imagine this. Imagine an attack helicopter. Now, see, with the helicopters, one of the biggest problems you have with aggression is noise. They can hear you coming. Yeah. So imagine a helicopter that could run 30% more efficiently would need a 30% smaller motor. Okay? So 
let's make it a 30% smaller motor, put wider rotors on it, blow the rotors down so that they don't break the sound barrier when they're turning. What we get is an almost entirely oh, silent attack helicopter. I mean, almost, you get no sound but the air that's moving around it. Nice. Right. Yeah. Now, what's that, what's that worth? Oh. <laughs> Shit. Which contract? <laughs> for sure, man. So there's lots of applications for this thing. The, really, the big problem is just getting people to, to not be so close-minded. Right. right. Well, yeah, that's a huge problem we have about people and everything right now. Everything is, is so regimented and so this, that. If you don't check 100 boxes down this line, you're not this, you're not that. Everyone. This Re- is the most spotted I've ever seen this country. Release it, the it, stick. It disturbs me. It's yeah. unbelievable. What the fuck is going on? Are you, are you letting really letting the politicians and the media fuck with your head that much? No. Those are the people you don't trust ever. Well, it's it's the news stations. It's the the faux the Fox the F A U X. It's the Fox. It's the faux news station. Well, that's funny because I have a. The- I have a uh, news stations. The ones they're they're not talking news. They're talking propaganda. No, no one's. Well, here's the problem. Right, here's the problem. None of the news stations are talking truth. There's three realities going on: the left, the right, and everyone else. And the everyone else is at seventy six percent right now. And the people in power with this twenty four percent are being fucking arrogant dicks. Mm. And now they want to divide, 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 divide down to the individual level. And that has to stop. I'm not talking politics, and I don't want to talk politics. This is cultural. This is, you know, now, like the reason this. why I there came is out. A, there's well, a news station coming coming forward now. Is, is becoming more prominent newsy. That seems to be pretty mainstream. I mean, it seems to not be yeah. so propaganda-ish. Well, what people don't if understand. really interested in the news and not what someone thinks the news interprets as. Well, Newsy is actually a pretty good channel. Well, like, for instance, okay, so height of the ratings last week, how many viewers do you think CNN got on its top-rated program? No idea. Less than one million. (laughs) What? Uh, MSNBC, do you know how many viewers per day their top-rated show gets see, see now they're as bad as fox is on the left absolutely absolutely this is the point i'm making Four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. oh give me a break and that's no. worldwide isn't it yes sir now Damn. and then they called joe rogan a righty what well, he's totally not he said like a classic liberal he just has conversation oh you have a different opinion please come on and tell me so and tell the audience and we'll have a discussion and try to prove each other wrong. God forbid. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he's got 35 yeah. million viewers per month. 35 million. The news stations have lost control. So they're trying to be, it's like some, uh, the sky is falling. The sky. Every day, you know, when they started mentioning, you know, uh, hey, it's drizzling out. The great drizzle of 2021. <laughs> Edgar, the drizzle. Okay, so let's trace this whole thing back to where it started, if you want. If it's okay, I'll express an opinion What's the definition of is, is? (laughs) Yeah. You fucking Madonna showed the world how to make a career out of controversy. Who? Madonna. No, actually, Hitler did. He created controversy on purpose so that people would talk about her, and it worked well, sure. for her. That made her career. Well, it's she was a marketing person as much yeah. as her singing did, I think. Well, you because know what the, I? Th- the news stations see that, and they're like, "Well, hell, let's go sensational then. Let's do sensational pieces and quit doing the real stuff." Yeah. And my God, in came the money. I did not so have sexual relations happen. with that woman. I just let her suck my cock. <laughs> And she let me put a cigar in her pussy. Dude, really? Like, I was like, what? You did what? Dude, the president fucking stuck a cigar in a fucking intern's... What? Dude. The whole thing, there's no, like, personal accountability anymore for shit. No. 
unless you offend someone, then they got to find shit from like 25 years ago, you know. It's, when did politics become like a you know like a, a sport? You know what I mean? Like it's like the, <laughs> yeah, like, dude, who cares? Over there, you know? te- your favorite teams or something? You know, it's, right? Like, it's crazy. <laughs> but they're 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 getting violent over it. People are people are getting violent over it, and they're they're dying. They're gonna die because I'm anti-fascist, and I'm gonna show you with my fascist <laughs> behaviors that I'm anti-fascist. You can't say that, <laughs> right. dude. Shut the fuck up already. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just, Jesus Christ! Well, Have a conversation, you know. Fuck, George. If you ever, if you ever like cash in on this thing, and uh, you know, we've got, you know. Okay, Jason. The proper <laughs> way to say shit is take. George. That's when you cool. become an ultra gajillionaire. Yeah, we're gonna like do a let's do a campaign, a billboard campaign nationwide, and all it says is "mind your business." Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Just mind your own. Alone, you know. There's Jay, two favorite. Jay, your idea has merit, but I think there, it's too complex. Yeah, there's two things I used to say to my kids all the time: mind your own. If there was something they didn't need to know about, and then get to stepping. Yeah. People need to get to stepping. Yeah. People yeah, need to get to stepping big thing. time. Everybody, mind your business, and we'll get along just fine. Like, hey, when someone comes out and they're like, "Oh my God, I want equal rights." And they're on national or international fucking television saying that they want equal rights. I'm all for equal rights. Nothing more. Sure. I don't want to, I don't want a quality plus. But when you're a 350 pound white dude with a pink um flat top and wearing a <laughs> muumu, dude or ma'am, you've achieved equal rights. Equality. Yeah. Cuz no one's killed you yet. You are there. So what what is what what what's the problem? Right. Hey. Well, you, you, I, if I you can't, really if you can't what, make what fun of yourself, they think they're missing, you know you, I mean? if it's you like, can't make fun of yourself or fun of your own well, community, no attention to them. That's the rights are missing. Yeah. Holy moly. Uh, I remember when this whole, uh, wage equal, equal wage thing started out and don't get me wrong. I'm all about equal pay. And I don't think anyone that works 40 hours a week should qualify for welfare. I don't, but at the same time. I saw these protesters. They were they were obviously McDonald's protesters because they had on McDonald's uniforms. And there was this older black fella, and he had a sign that he had made on a piece of cardboard, and it says "Super Size R Wages A R E." <laughs> and I thought, you know, I mean, no offense, I'm all about equality. I am, but if you don't know the difference between A R E and O U R, you are well, not worth. <laughs> Fifteen dollars an hour. You're just not. Well, here, Sorry. here, here's the thing that I have with that. Okay, so, okay, so if people are like, "Oh my God, this guy's worked at Burger King for twenty two years," and da 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 da, and he's only made, dude, if you're at Burger King for twenty two years and you're not the manager, yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> Well, what the fuck are you doing? Entry there? level jobs. There has to be that. Well, abso- ab- that the absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we've got and kids. I try to explain. Need to work, they need entry level jobs. And I try to explain to people. And I'm an independent, so I try to explain to people. Hey, man, have you ever owned a business? And all the people that are for this never owned a business. They work for unions. They work for uh, universities or school systems uh, or some type of thing where they get paid an ex- an exorbitant amount of money, and for what they do. They have no idea. No, they don't. It's like, dude, well, do you know how, like, out of, like, I had a small, small company, two guys with income of, like, whatever, 600K. I was making 35 grand. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's hustling. You know what I mean? It's like people <laughs> like, oh, my God. I, oh, my God. They, he, he, he passed the tax thing for, like, past their car for LLCs. Well, dumbass <laughs> Karen, since you don't know that, like, all the guys that work for themselves have an LLC and their tax rate went down to 22 and a half percent. That's a huge fucking savings. But since you're fucking yeah. stupid and you're pissed off because you believe in Rachel Maddow <laughs> or, or you believe in the other side, who's the other guy fucking Tucker, whatever, you know, both sides are totally insane. They've lost the plot. Both sides. 
there's where we agree. Both sides are insane. Yeah, they well, lost George, the plot. You know, George, to play, to play off what you, another thing that you said to start with, I'd like to know who these lucky bastards are that get to work only 40 hours a week. I mean, what are they doing with the other half of the week? You know? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> well, Jason, I like to go fishing. Uh, I like to draw. Uh, hey, by the way, I've got a drawing table. Have you heard of RedTube.com? Who? I mean, what? It was just—it was just a porn reference, George. Sorry. I'm sorry. Forty, I wouldn't 40 hours a week—that's for Baptists. No, but Jason would know. <laughs> the fridge worked thirty-six, and they're bitching about that. Yeah, laying down. Right. That's a joke from oh, the world. Yeah, can't make this well, I miss you guys, man. I do. I'm, Absolutely, I'm, man. I'm down. I, I never thought I would. I thought when I got out of there and I, and I started doing better, I thought, man, I'm going to look back. And He's like, fuck <laughs> those guys. Yeah, Holy shit. Dust, man, behind <laughs> yeah, George is like, I was in the army, but Sunrise, Florida was my nom. <laughs> George still has PTSD from Sunrise, Florida. Yeah. Yeah. What are you Nobody doing? No problem. Who's no, tickling no, my nose? <laughs> I got scars. I don't want to talk, bro. I don't want to talk. Oh, right. my God. Right. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. Okay. So every morning, I think we told the story before, but it's still funny because we haven't told it with George. Every morning, someone would discover, and you'd hear, ah! uh, this is, Are we talking about Rocco now? And it was uh, the fucking wolf bait. The fucking turd floating... Uh, Oh my god. Months and months uh, and months this thing fucking went on. And then one day I'm like, oh my and I just got grossed out. I'm like, oh my god. Oh my god. And it just calculated <laughs> it just calculated. I'm like, there's never toilet paper in there. I know you called us not there. Not one, come here. Not and they're like, ah oh, oh my paper. god. Yeah. Holy uh, shit. Yeah. Wolf uh, bait. Wolf Vince bait should Sherlock be Sherlock Holmes on that one. Yeah, wolf bait should be they're, another. Uh, they're, they're, that's scarring. They're, yeah, they're, that's, yeah wolf, there's no going back from wolf, that. That's, we need another T-shirt just with wolf bait on there. Then we need one that says cod neck. Uh, yeah. well, look, hey, hey, Jason, hey, you hey, cod hey, neck hey, fucking pig skilling fucking. <laughs> Maybe, maybe he was using the sink as a bidet. Let's give yeah. him the benefit of the doubt. And it wasn't beer. You had to drink Damn a bjar. Jay. Yeah. <laughs> Where's your bjar, you bastard? Oh, I rinsed my face out of that sink. No, I'm, I'm like, oh, I need to go wash my face. Yeah, brushing their teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, pal. This is oh, buddy gay. Right on. Hey, hey this South Florida water kind of stinks. It's got a smell. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Sure does got a unique odor. About Holy it, shit. Odor. Yeah. High mineral content. Uh-huh. <laughs> kind of smells like love and kind of smells like hopelessness all at the same time. <laughs> hey, so uh, Vince, yes, sir. Uh, on on the website, on the PPM website, yes, there's some videos that I made. I actually got to do some videos with them. After I'd been there for about six or eight months, they said, "Man, you're doing really good. I just, I wish you could do videos." I'm like. You didn't read my resume all the way through, did you? Nah, <laughs> nice. Nobody like, well, no. I'm no like, one reads I'm those, videos, dude. Man, I can, I can, I can make videos, and they said, "Oh my God, well, we need to do some." And nice. so I made some with with the the staff there at PPM, and it started out really dry, but then they started to loosen up, and the guy that we had at the time, he's gone now, but the parts guy that we had, Chris. Oh my God, he was a loose cannon, man. And, and we didn't, I mean, he was great. He he was so good at ad libbing, I wouldn't give him a script. I wouldn't do it. It would, yeah. it would nail him down. It would, it would end him down if I gave him a script. Yeah, I was, so, a, Chris, I was a parts here's guy. The concept, at a- here's what we're doing blah, 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 blah. And two or three takes, and man, it was. <sighs> now, gold. If you if you look at them, they they look simple and backyardish. I did that on purpose. Yeah, 
but I mean, at least there's some intent and I've actually got to make some videos here in the last year or two. And it was so much fun. I, I remember now why I went to school in the first place mm-hmm. because the videos, making the videos and editing them and doing was so much fun. I really, I really enjoyed it. They want me to make some more videos, but we've got a new parts guy. He's pretty dry. I, I don't know. Right. We'll you know, I was a, I was a Honda parts guy for a couple of years after I was a, uh, uh, what now? Service. I was a service advisor for Honda, oh, okay. and then after yeah. like getting yelled at all day for two years, I'm like, "Fuck that! I'm going back. Yeah. I'll go to parts." So in the parts department, mm-hmm. this this one guy comes up, and he's like, "Okay, I need this part." And I'm like, "Did it?" And I'm right. looking up, I'm looking up the part. Okay, did it? Okay, but Michael, that'll be two hundred forty eight dollars. He's like, "What?" I'm like, yeah, you see this one year of the car, of the Accord, they changed the uh, manifold. So for just this one year, your car and your model has this one difference. <laughs> you know? And they did that shit. Yeah. They did that shit all the time. And he goes, $248. And blah. He's like, what it the fuck? A, I'm like, sir. It should be a $20 part, yeah. I'm like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, sir. Uh, let me ask you something. I said, I don't make the prices, man. I'm, I'm working parts. I'm like, uh, what do you do for a living? He goes, I'm an engineer. I'm like, well, yeah. it's your fault. The irony. Yeah. I'm like, this is an engineer who did this bullshit. So uh, the, uh, here's one of your profession. And he fucking shut up and paid. It was fucking great. Right. But uh, yeah, but no, but going back to the parts department, I worked with this kid. Well, kid, he's younger than me. He's like 31 to right now. His name is Jacob. And he is one of the most hilarious human beings I've ever met. This guy is like pure funny and comes from a good place. It's never mean. He belches louder than like every time he does this, that he would go in and he would belch. And it was like fucking someone screaming. And I'm like, dude, you're going to fucking, your vocal cords are going to shoot out of your mouth. What are you doing? You know, you'd be like, Bleh. but it would be worth it. Oh my dude. Best. One of the best human beings I've ever had the privilege of knowing for sure. Yeah. Nice. He'll be on, but yeah, let's get that part. Other parts guy on, man. We could have a fucking, uh, a fucking parts fucking division podcast. And George, this is not just the first time you're going to be on here. Just so you know, you'll you're the door is always open, my brother. Oh yeah. You know, this is so much fun. You know, like you have no. Of course you do. We just had. You know, there's a, a certain point in life that, you know, certain things are magical. You know, everyone was like in transition, and we were trying to find out where we wanted to go, and everyone is working hard, not making money, playing hard. And he having uh, even more more fun and like figuring out who your lifetime family is, you know. Like I know that even though me and George don't talk all the time, or me, you know, me and Jason don't talk all the time, or Jason and George don't talk all the time. If it really came down to it and shit was on fire, and I picked up the phone, oh, yeah. I have no I do no audio. question that no matter you know. We wrote a script about it. I mean, that's how much that, you know, and it's the script is funny. Remember that script, George? The one yeah. that we were sending around. I'd write some pages. You'd write some pages, Jason. We were emailing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, that script is fucking hilarious. Uh, such a great way I have a hard it. copy. It's like almost again, nothing needs to be changed. You know, just set it in 1990, whatever, or 1998, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing know, needs yeah. to be changed, you know. It's like fuck it. dude, this is it's so like um organically funny. Nothing's pushed. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just generally well, funny. You know? None of the three of us think pushy. We don't think that way. I'd have to go back and reread it. I've you know, I've killed a lot of brain cells oh my since God. then. But uh... Oh, and just before we forget <clears throat> we have to salute another um townhouse visitor who was a regular. Okay. A beloved, even though he didn't give a lot of shit, he laughed yeah. at all of it, Mr. John Broaches. Oh, John yeah. Broaches. Heaven, yeah. Fuck to, yeah, I, dude. to John. One of, yeah, absolutely. Hands up. Yeah. Here we go. To John. 
One of the best fucking human beings I've ever known in my life. That guy's fucking... Dude, he'd come in, you know, he'd hang out. He didn't have a lot of friends, it seemed, at the time or whatever. I fucking thought he was a cool guy. Oh, like, hey, yeah, man, he was come a great on over. guy. John was a great guy. Yeah, and he's like, oh, let's stop at the grocery store before we go to your house. And let's have fucking cook Thanksgiving on, in fucking July. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was just I, that type hope, of guy. You I know honestly I mean? really hope someday that I get a chance to give him back some of the goodness he gave me while that I knew him. Oh, dude, that guy's, so, you know, and he'll say no, 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 because he's a modest. Do you, uh, Vince, you still talk to him? Have you been in touch with him? I haven't talked to him in a few years. He is on Facebook, but he's not, he a, fa- okay. but he's not a Facebook user. Yeah. Or at least not in the sphere of the shit that I post, you know what I mean? You know, uh, where, where does he live in? I mean, where is he in the world here? I have no idea. Okay. Um, you know, we talked briefly. You know, he could have moved by. You know, John didn't like staying in one place for too long, it seemed. He'd, like, every, like, eight years he'd move. So that's being fair. That's not being, like, a bullshit artist. You know what I mean? Like, I could have talked to him and could tell you he's in <coughs> California, but he's probably in Vermont or something. You know what I mean? Wow, really? Oh, I don't know. You know what I mean? I yeah, but uh, you know, yeah, uh, cool dude. he was totally cool. so. <clears throat> we're hanging out this one night, and so I would always go. So I'd hang out with Bro just like every Friday night if I wasn't working a gig, or if he was coming on the gig with me, we'd leave after that to do like the um the dance show for Jamaica or the fucking. There was another gig that was like right after his work closed, but if I wasn't working, I'd go pick up Bro just on Friday. And we'd go grab some booze, and then we'd, you know, you know, we'd have, you know, we'd go party at his apartment. And then Sundays, he would come over with us if, you know, we weren't working and, you know, have the feast. So the one day, we go, he worked at a sushi restaurant. He was a cook at the sushi restaurant. Yeah, that's right. His parents owned it. Yeah, and I hadn't had sushi at that point, you know? So yeah. Like, okay. First time I ever had sushi, I actually liked it. Yeah, I'm dude. I'm a total sushi uh, head at this point. Yeah. I love. I could eat. Yeah, I used to eat sushi like four times a week when I lived there. Oh, that was the real shit, though, man. His family restaurant was the real shit. That was the good stuff, man. Oh, oh for sure. Yeah, everyone dressed uh, traditional and stuff. So anyway, so I go in there, and everyone knew me and stuff. And so he comes up to me with this green shit, you know, and he's like, "Hey," he's like, "Hey, Vin, Vin man." try this i'm like what i'm like what is it he's like oh it's 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 kind of like ice cream right i'm like oh okay so i took the whole fucking spoonful and everyone's eyes fucking went wide open and it was wasabi which is like a fucking horseradish from hell but it was a whole fucking teaspoonful it was a fucking honking so i'm like i can't fucking breathe you know, I'm like, oh my god, my I'm sweating balls. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, and they're all laughing. Oh, ha, 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 ha. they're all. I'm like, yeah. and the, you know, it was great because they thought it was, you know, hilarious. I thought it was funny too, but to see people dressed in traditional, like high class Japanese attire and fucking cracking the fuck up is another level funny. <laughs> Because I, I love that culture, number one. And f- two, to see them just bust out and not be, you know, calm is hilarious. So I got like, yeah, I was fine at like, I would put it this way. I was fine at beer number three, but I went for five. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They're like, oh, here, here, have another beer. Here, have another beer. I'm like, I think I need another one. You know, I ain't got any money. It's fucking Friday night. Fuck yeah. For the joke, you'll give me another two beers. Fuck yeah. But, oh, dude, what a, what a fucking uh, nice fucking guy, man. Yeah, dude. Yes, yeah. he was. That's great, right. great conversations. He never, I mean, you know, he always wanted the best for everybody. And, you know, it just a fantastic. He was always just very generous and very nice. Yeah. Very good hearted person. Absolutely. You know? And uh, even, you know, we may have looked gruffer back in the day. You know, all of us were like that, though, you know. So, you know. know. Hey, you remember that old black Jeep I used to drive? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, old oh my God. Yeah. Old enough. One time I was driving from the the barrack. The, I don't want to say the barrack. It's not the barracks. It's the doggone hotel to the school. And on A one A. Just so everyone was, knows, a hotel is not a book written by a hooker. He means hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Old Gruff busted the Universal oh, joint. Oh, oh yeah! So oh, I'm Gruff. I'm in the turning lane at A1A, dropping a drive shaft, and I've got to turn the the four wheel drive on on the Jeep so that the front end can pull me because well, the back have. doesn't have a drive shaft. Yeah. But I'm laying underneath the Jeep with a damn wrench. Getting the shit and drive shaft out of there because it fell out and liked to turn the whole Jeep over. <laughs> the front, the front U joint, Jay, dropped in the front, and so the drive shaft was still connected to the rear. Just but the, Jeep was, the Jeep was moving at the time, so the, it wanted to act like a javelin and stick in the ground yeah, yeah, and turn the rear end over. Yep. But luckily, I wasn't going that fast. If I'd been going 50, I would have been turned over and dead. Oh yeah, I remember you and I pulling the transmission in the parking lot back there. Remember that we were out there with flashlights. And that, that <laughs> son of a bitch that yeah. said he was from Knoxville is going to help us with the with the clutch. He never showed up. Remember that too. <laughs> yeah. Cod neck mother that, for was, that was the whole reason we was pulling the damn transmission because that yeah. guy said I'm from Knoxville and I'm your friend from Tennessee and I'm more hip yeah, yeah. with that clutch. And then by God, we pulled yeah, the transmission yeah. in the middle of the damn night and he didn't show up. Bastard. Yeah, the other night. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. That's right. The other night, yeah. Jason texts me. He's like, "Hey, George is coming on the show." I'm like, "Ah!" And I go and I text him back. I'm like, "Hey, George, you know borscht isn't made out of squirrel, right?" And and I then I'm like, <laughs> "Not that you Yankee motherfuckers would know what you're talking about, like a motherfucker." <laughs> oh my god. And George wasn't a fucking, you know, one of those people. It was just the generalization. <laughs> All in fun. Yeah. All in fun. Absolutely. People need to see that, you know. Jesus Christ, yep. relax. Yeah. Hey, how many times did you guys close the windows on me while I lived there? See, I never had a key to the townhouse. I never had a key. Oh, you didn't? I would get, no, I never had one. And so when you got to lock the doors and close the windows, I had no way in. I had just... Oh, dude, that was oh, Sherry. That yeah. wasn't us. We'd fucking leave half the fucking... I thought you were doing it on purpose. Oh, dude, we'd leave everything fucking open. We'd go to bed hammered. We didn't fucking check on shit. Well, I know, but I was coming home from work, and everything would be closed up, and I'm like, the bastards, they, they're trying to run me off. Oh, no, that was... Be, no, you didn't have to sit out there on the steps until somebody showed up. It's fucking now, raining out here. I would stick something under the window and pry it open and shit. I, it's no, raining out here, damn it. It's... It's raining out here. <laughs> no, I remember pouring through that kitchen window many a time. Yeah. Hey, you know, I was thinking about that old townhouse. You remember? No, I always made ago? sure the window was open. We always had to close the sliding glass door, but I always made sure the window was open. But Sherry would fucking... That's what I thought. Sherry had done it, yeah. Yeah. That, that place she was wasn't like thinking she was just doing it. Like someone's going to come in, break in, and assault you when you live with five dudes. Right. <laughs> Hey, no. Know, that was kind of like the uh, the Three's Company of. of come and knock on my door. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. You yeah, Four's no Four's Company. Not, none of us are dating her, so I mean. Yeah, well, yeah, Rock and and Spook weren't there normally, or yeah. and Spook left. So by the time you both of you guys came there, Spook wasn't even around. So. Yeah, I never met Spook. And Rock would be like here and there, and then he left. Yeah, Rock was there. He was almost transparent. Yeah. Do you guys remember, like, oh, you'd go in the kitchen and turn the light on at night, and it was like Joe's apartment. There'd be so many cockroaches. They'd just run all over, all over the countertops and shit. That no, I didn't go in the kitchen at midnight. Jason, I didn't have enough food to go in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> George didn't own anything in the fridge like a motherfucker. <laughs> what in the hell am I doing in the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, not that there was anything in there anyway, because everyone is broke. Yeah, remember how the, somebody else's 
Bruce's food. That's right. <laughs> right. Well, uh, Bruce, right? Wasn't Bruce the landlord? Uh, I don't remember. I don't know what his name was. Hey, George, I got some hamburger helper. You want some? Like a motherfucker. <laughs> I remember going down there, man, turning around, and there's just like, roaches everywhere. I was like, good Lord. They bomb that place every month, but, man, they were huge, too. Yeah. Boy. You can't you can't keep your place clean if the people don't next next door they don't place clean. Right. Yeah, our place is never like messy. Like we I mean we tie one on but in the morning when we woke up we'd fucking clean it up. But we didn't have enough food to make cockroach bait. Oh for sure. For sure, for sure. And and normally with the beer bait we'd have been fighting the cockroaches for it. Yeah, normally with the beer cans and shit, we'd just throw them away. Yeah, it was only when we had like big bashes that we didn't clean. Been a fist fight in the parking lot on the countertop right there with the cockroaches right. because hell, we're starving too, you bastards. Yeah, with the big right. clock on the wall. Tick tock. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I still have all the footage from that fucking song, and me and Jason. George, what are you doing music wise? Uh, what am I doing music wise? Well. I, I promised, I've always promised myself that someday, ironic you should ask this, someday I'm going to learn how to play the piano. My mother offered me piano lessons when I was a child and I took one or two and it was boring and so I didn't keep doing it. I should have. Turns out that's the instrument that I would like to play now as an adult, but at the time I didn't have the attention span. Nice. Well, I promised myself someday... I'm going to get myself a keyboard and I'm going to learn how to play it. Jason, he's probably like snapping on like some like old map from like 1849 that says like, you know, <laughs> great grandpa Jessica's fucking no, secret I, gold swills. No, no, I ain't dug up no Confederate pianos. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all this Confederate money hidden in the back of this piano. Who are you talking? <laughs> <laughs> Just a good old Damn, boy. See, I knew pianos had something for me. Never meaning no harm. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, shit. So, so I was at the pawn shop the other day. You don't say. I saw this nice Yamaha keyboard sitting there, and it was pretty oh. cheap. Oh, wow. And I'm like, what? So, so I looked at it, and I fooled with it and tinkered with it, and I don't know, it, it liked me, and I liked it. And so I bought it. Nice. George Ike is fucking math heads. How's a hundred bucks? <laughs> I've got a software that that's going to teach me how to play it. I, I put it on my laptop and it's going to teach me how to play this, this piano. Nice, man. So it's ironic you should ask, but turns out someday was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That's great. And I tell you now, with like even on YouTube and stuff, you can learn everything on that. You know, if only we had that when we were kids. Oh, for sure. Well, right now, I'm still on rest and and beats and things. I'm still because I want to learn how to read music too. I mean, I don't want to. I want to do it right. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole point. It's a hobby. I, I you know. Right. The point of self-expression. So I want to do it correctly. Absolutely. Yeah, like I just got a drum kit after fucking forever. I heard about that. So you're starting drumming again. Yeah, man. Like yesterday I played like I had I played my song list and before you knew it I played like fifteen songs and I'm like, oh wow, really? Oh cool. And I wasn't even tired, you know, and I'm enjoying it, you know. That's good. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, so Jason would go to bed early because he was twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. You, you're, you're, he was like he was like nineteen you or mean, like twenty. You mean mentally or emotionally? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, oh, Both. Jason's like yes. okay. The answer is yes. Yeah, Jason's like okay, guys. Forty-eight beers is my fucking. You know, we're like okay, pussy. You know. And he'd, <laughs> he'd go to bed and we'd still have half the truck outside. But no, 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 no. So, like, Jason, you know, would go upstairs, and me and George would continue because he was on the couch in the living room, and yeah. I'm a night owl, and we would just have these this long... Was, was in my bedroom. Yeah, yeah and we'd have these right. long, in-depth conversations that were just really cool and unique to the time. You know, so, 
because you know, and I always stress to people, I'm like, hey man, talk. Oh, well, I'm not. No, uh, we don't need to talk because our view is superior. No, 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 no. You're against supremacy, right? Of any kind. And that's the idea. So you have to have that conversation. And yeah. there was a lot of things me and George didn't uh, agree on. Yeah. But that's why we were talking. And it wasn't, we weren't judging each other for disagreeing because we, like, there's certain people that you, in life, that you can have certain conversations with that you can't have with anyone else. And to me, it's me and George. Like, for whatever that we talked about, we never got heated unless we were giving each other shit, you know, like, because, oh, they got a point there, so we got to fucking dial up the shit given a little bit. (laughs) <laughs> but that was really there was never any animosity and it was like really good conversations. Vince, and, I don't I don't ever remember getting mad at you or, or right. regret yeah. our, our conversations. I don't remember anything like that. Right. I and to have much a different yeah. easy, flowing, casual. Yeah, and to have yeah, to have a culture right now that isn't willing to try to have that. That's what upsets me. It's not the right. small conversation. It's not small talk. No, no, no. Conversations is not small talk. You you have to invest time to try to understand with people you don't agree with in order to go, oh, okay, I get why they don't like it. Yeah. Even if I don't I agree mean, with them, okay, yeah, I can accept that. They want to shut you down now. It's like, shut, yeah. you know. Shut no you down, way. cancel you, all this bullshit. I mean, it's, you know. Right, you know, like, whatever. Like, you know, with, with Jason, we have, a you know, a whole other thing. And, would you know, um, because, it, like, um, becoming an atheist was so, like, weird to you, George, for me to do that. And for me to do that as an ex-Catholic or whatever was, like, a, a weird thing. So you helped me cement my position because that's what I had, you know, decided. To, it wasn't a whim. Right, right. But I never negated what you thought because it helped you. And it was part it's of your right, whole brother, fabric. To think what you think. Yeah. So, you know, like those conversations, I have to say, in my life are some of the purest conversations on a whole magnitude of intellectual subjects that if people looked at us having them at the time would have laughed. <laughs> but... I can say that those conversations were probably the smartest ones happening at the time. Oh, yeah. Wow. You know what I mean? As far as, like, learning <laughs> well, and impact I, and everything? I hadn't thought of it that way, Vince, but, hell, I, I find it hard to argue with. You know, because we would go deep, like, okay, we're going to, what, what's this about? Yeah, we did. About? We did. That's right, man. We went, I mean, we went not deep. That's yeah, right. it's like, oh, we don't, we can't afford cable, but we got, like, booze. And... Yeah, we got a guy. <laughs> of yeah, we got right. some time, brother. So oh, let's, let's grab the shovel. The shit out yeah. of that. Right, and then Jason. Got a table, but yeah, we got a guy and then Jason would walk in. Hey, Jay, what's going on? He'd be like, I was probably watching porn on VHS upstairs. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, so before I forget, so earlier I was telling a story that, you know, Jason was, you know, uh, younger than me, and Jason's kind of like my younger brother figure in life, you know, and um, and often called him that. So I would be like, you know, hey, Jason, you know your mom's pretty hot. And i just like, dude, I would fuck with them. I'm like, so when she's coming down, uh, where's she staying? Yeah. Man, she's a looker. Oh, see, that movie, uh, yeah, no, Yvonne is awesome. I, I love yeah, her. She's, but, uh, you know, yeah. like, of course I didn't, you know, well, maybe I did mean it, but no. But, you know, it, I, it would, Jason would get totally uncomfortable and I would just fuck with him for like, you know, hours. Oh, yeah. yeah, you always did that. Uh, well, hey, Jason, you know your mom's single. You know what's going on, don't you? <laughs> Oh, yeah. well, there's, that, there's that movie too, the Marine yeah. movie. But there. no, Yvonne. How's your mom? Yvonne, mom. we all love Better you. My sister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but my sister's not bad. Right. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, well, I want to sleep with her. What are you taking trade? Hey, George, is that oh, your no, dog? You not anymore. <laughs> what? Who? Hey, George, is that your dog? Not anymore. <laughs> Well, it used to be. <laughs> Turns out that's before Jason Cornswoggard. Cornswoggard. Cornswallard. Oh my god. Cornswallard. So uh, so you found two what a great I, night. I think I have a couple yeah, of the comics. What a great, great night. Jason says he doesn't have any comics as maybe some ex girlfriend fucking burned all his shit. I don't know, but uh you know. Well, I sent him one, and I've got another one I can scan in and send him here to probably tomorrow. I would do it tonight, but I, I'm now. Nah, yeah, I talked. I talked to. Because uh, um, I'm a sorry bastard, Jason. Just go ahead and say it. Because <laughs> you're a sorry bastard. Right. <laughs> you old I'll fuck, fucking ball sack, dragon cog. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, this so, here's a good one too. It's a battle of. Uh, Ridge Runner's Gulp, by God. <laughs> by God. Hey, hey, and listen, when you start talking to people that have been tankers, if they say I was a tanker, oh, that man. means they were a Marine tanker and rode a dyno, an M60. Bullshit. If they say I was a tanker, by God, then they were an Army tanker that drove an M1. <laughs> there you go. That's a badass bitch, too, man. Oh, I bet. I bet that's it's wild. four gallons a mile. <laughs> I've only uh, I've only driven uh, Not four miles a gallon. I've only driven four gallons a mile. I've, o- I've only driven Russian tanker. <laughs> For real, we had we had to uh, we had to re recreate uh, what the fuck was that city Sokovo Skokovo? Oh uh, yeah, whatever the fuck. Yeah, it's so we had, a bell. The, the sound of it's ringing a bell. Yeah, so we had to recreate the Yugoslavia thing. And uh, uh, Sokovo. And this is, uh, what, World War II, or what are we no, doing? No, 90s. We're doing... 90s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, when the Civil War was going on. And uh, so... Civil War. Right, right. Yeah, so we had to recreate that, and I got to drive a Russian tank. That was badass. Oh, wow. Yeah. Plus special effects that I got to. What a T eighty. Thought it was small, man. It was it was like literally I could be in it and no one else. It wasn't that. It wasn't much bigger Uh, than a like. No, it wasn't a T eighty. It wasn't much bigger than like a track. A PT seventy six. It wasn't much bigger than like a tracked troop carrier. Put it that way. Yeah, PT seventy six. Yeah, so that was pretty badass. You know. Yeah, I like recreating things where you're getting shot at, not actual things that you're getting shot at. That's why I never worked with Alec Baldwin. Uh, Oh! oh, Hickory dickory dock! Oh! He was there. Uh, Damn it. Little boy blue, he needed the money. Oh! Oh. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh, man. Dice, Dice, he couldn't make it in this climate, could he? Oh, no, he's still going, dude. Is he? Yeah, he just had a reality show on. He was, yeah, he's still, yeah, he's still do, he's still dice. He's got oh, these wow. big okay, fucking better. glasses on now, but uh, you know, no hair basically, but you know, hey. like us, yeah, we can relate. Right, right, right. Dice. All right, dice. fellas, it has been very excellent to talk with you. You too. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'm Oh, and which so, is in if you want. Real quick, are, real quick. Always available. Well, hold on, I gotta really tell. Available for you guys. That's that's the case. Hold right on, there. George. I gotta tell go. one more story. Yes, sir. So, so one night when me and George, this is what I was getting to, having one of these conversations, <laughs> and I'm like, we're both hammered because we're 21 years old, right. and I got. Yeah, that sounds about right. I got George, and I'm moving out of state. And I hand him uh, an acoustic guitar, and I write, find the blues. I'm like, you gotta find the blues. Because we had this whole fucking conversation about finding the blues. Uh, you know, it doesn't, you know, it was just a weird thing. It, like, it was probably, a, you know, um, a way to talk about other things. And like, hey, brother, love you. Here we go. We're splitting up. Here's the thing. You know, and I hand him this guitar. 
that. And I don't know. For some reason, I just wanted to mention that guitar that I know that you wound up giving to your brother. But, so I'm glad that you uh, got the piano. So uh, once you find the blues, you can come uh, do some uh, ditties with me and Jason over there. Yeah, that's right. Hey, George, I don't think you've mentioned how many heads of cabbage did you have to trade for that piano at the pawn shop? <laughs> so... <laughs> There is this old widower in the in the grocery store, and he he walks up to the, this young kid working in the produce section, and he says, "Hey, I'm I'm wanting a salad tonight, but I only want half a head of lettuce here because I'll never eat the other half. It'll go bad. Can I just buy half a head of lettuce?" The kid goes, oh, "God, all right. Let me ask my manager. I'll be right back." So he walks into the back and he goes into the break room and there's his manager and he says, hey, there's this asshole out here who wants to buy half a head of cabbage. <laughs> well, his manager is looking up behind him. He's making his eye, he's moving his eyes up there and, and the, the kid realizes that the guy that he was talking about was followed him right in there. <laughs> so he says, uh, and this gentleman right here has graciously agreed to buy the other half. The manager says, I think that'll be fine. Go ahead. <laughs> so he, uh, he splits the head of lettuce, and off we go. Well, later on, the manager comes up to the kid, and he says, hey, that was pretty fast thinking there, what you did with that guy in, in the break room there. He says, where are you from, kid? And the kid says, Green Bay. And he said, well, I've heard Green Bay is a great place to live. Why would you move away from there? And he says, ah, there ain't nothing but whores and football players in Green Bay. And the manager says, really? Well, my wife is from Green Bay. <laughs> kind of stares at him. And he says, uh, the kid says, uh, well, what position does she play? <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Hey, George. Uh, yeah. yeah uh, uh, shit, nay. What did the altar boy say to the priest? <clears throat> Not again. Ah, <laughs> <coughs> oh, Vince. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, yeah, you know what the last thing uh, pubic hair hits before it hits the ground? I do, but I forget. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> it's weird. It's like, yeah. Uh, anyway, when we grew up, there was... When we grew up, there was pubic hair, you know? Right, right. Yeah. No, it's still kind of... Uh, oh, you yeah. still have those? I thought you did away with those when you had that girl that did the Brazilian five o'clock shatter thing. Oh, uh, no, that was later. Yeah. yeah, like I was talking, like I was having this whole conversation once and it was like a bunch of 50 to 60-year-old guys and they're talking, like half the guys shaved their balls, half the guys didn't. And they're talking uh, this, that, and the other, and like da-da-da-da-da. I'm like, hey... I'm like, really? I'm like, come on. It feels better. The said, the other, da 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 da. I'm like, oh no, it's gotta be, you know, like Neanderthals. And they're like, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> and uh, Gee, what did he just I'm say? like, no. I'm like, I'm like, really? I'm like, really? I'm like, think about it. Think about it, though. I'm like, from the wo- from the from the woman's perspective, do you really think they look at a half bald Chihuahua and say, "Let me put that in your my mouth"? No. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's like a half bald chihuahua. Yeah, they're like, oh yeah. I'm like, no. Nah, okay. uh, if we knew what women thought, we wouldn't do half of the shit that we do. Hey, you know, if it increases frequency, who am I to argue? Who who am I to argue? Argue. I can open up another beer. Oh, Jason, just so you know, in my Jason, so I have the I have Ray's six pack cooler here. Next to me, yeah. like I do for every show, and at the end it says, more, we need more beer. But uh, since I ran out of ice, and you made the butter joke earlier, I am actually cooling my beer with two pounds of butter. There you go. <laughs> Adapted <laughs> over cold, brother. That's bohemian engineering at its finest. It reminds me of my first one. Right? <laughs> 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 oh! All right. Dude, so, fellas, it has been outstanding. You are wonderful to talk to you guys. You are yes, welcome anytime, here. brother. 
but I'm about to fall out. Right. Well, that's because you're fucking old. And actually, George is like, okay, if I go to bed now, I got 15 minutes to masturbate. Then I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a. That means three clips across two networks that I can fucking. <laughs> but uh, uh, he's gonna put on his Liberace costume and practice the piano before he goes to bed. Absolutely, oh, the piano, <laughs> not the piano, the piano. Well, George, dude. This was fucking awesome. Uh, it was awesome. And we can do it again. I will do it again. I well, surely will. Well, absolutely, absolutely. because we're going to fucking drag your ass back because this is hilarious. And, uh, it's, you know, I think uh, the world needs to see some real conversations. That it, you know, we're not putting on a show here. We're just... Uh, the world definitely yeah. needs some real People talking, reality, busting balls, bullshit in and having real fun. And sharing... Reality check. Yeah. As dudes, as dudes, you know, as men or dudes right now, we don't have a lot of outlets to be totally forthright and fucking honest. And uh, this is uh, what we're going to do here. Everyone's welcome, of course. But, you know, part of uh, being able to move on, move forward is to, uh, you know, be open. And if you're not open, you can't. We have to understand who you are and where you're at. Yeah. Before you can have a stable position with someone else. For sure. Absolutely. I mean, you can't say, I think your position is this or that, if you don't know who you are. Right on. So, just a simple, a simple, who I am and where I'm at, I think is an outstanding idea for anyone. Right. Yeah. You know, Jason, I was just thinking, I'm like, uh, we're at uh, about two and a half hours right now. Do you know how long George has been hanging on to the side of that fucking telephone pole? <laughs> 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 it's getting fucking cold out of here, and I gotta take it. Shit. <laughs> they closed the feed store hours ago. All righty. All right, George. The, the owner's wife is sitting here looking at me like I'm trying to block right. in the place. <laughs> oh, dang it. That's it. Mr. Douglas. Uh, yeah. Shit. All right, so uh, me and Jason will continue uh, on here for a few more minutes. Yeah, but uh, you too, George, love you, man. Have a good one, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, brother. Yes, sir. Have a good one. Good, Jason, that was fucking awesome. Yeah, dude. That was a long time coming. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't missed us a beat, man. Same old, same old. You know? Oh, hell no. Yeah. yeah. What a great I'm... fucking, you know. I mean, we talk about it all the time, but, you know, what a great exchange of, you know, people at the right time where you needed those, like, those yeah. type of people to hang out with, you know? Absolutely, yeah. You know. And look at us all these, that was, what, 20, I mean, 25, 30 years ago? I mean, you know what I mean? That's awesome. You know? Oh, for sure, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's the thing about friendship, you know? Friendship isn't vapid. It's not um, short-lived yeah. if you are actually really friends with someone and not using it for an opportunistic way. Right. Since right. we all right. work in entertainment, to have 30-year relationships is fucking important. Absolutely. You know, like, you know... Just like you, most of my friends I've known for 30 plus years. Yeah, I have yeah. newer ones, not many, but most of my friends yeah. I've known forever. You know, right? Yeah, same here. Yeah, I'm, I still have friends. With, you know, my best friend, we were five years old, man. We still talk, you know. Just, oh, for sure. Yep. You know, but uh, oh my god, fucking Jorge! Hey! And oh he's god. still funny as a motherfucker, too. You oh, know? for sure, dude. Yep. For sure. Yeah, we got to have that parts through down maybe we can get some racing guys on oh and i talked to um this guy ray youngman who's a world-renowned award-winning tattoo artist oh wow and uh now he's like managing like uh these chicago wrestlers oh nice and dude he's hilarious That'd be interesting dude he's got yeah. the fucking way big fucking goatee down was like belly button long hair and shit he's like you know yeah. late 60s totally cool guy his name's ray but yeah. uh yeah, he's I'll fucking have some great. stories for sure. Oh, for sure. And um, let's see. So next week we're gonna have Ted Haler on, who's a Vietnam vet. We're gonna continue yeah. our uh, veteran. And so that's stay. the guy with the yacht, right? That we were talking about doing this week. Yeah, he has a he has a program where he helps um, veterans suffering from PTSD, and he takes them out uh, yeah. 
in the ocean. They do uh, different programs on this um, large, you know, ship, a yacht. Yeah. Uh, and he has a, another couple of boats. But, uh, yeah, Ted's a really interesting interesting dude, cool guy. Then yeah. we have uh, George Papabeus. Yeah. Uh, he's He wants to come on, so hopefully we'll have him on the Saturday after that. Steve Schwab wants to come on. Oh, nice. we, yeah, we have, uh, um, yeah, well, Steve should, you know, he should have been one of the first guests. But so Steve's going to come on. Then we have um, uh, Heather Hogreep's going to come on and talk about, at some point, talk about um, uh, Two Pities and a Hound. Uh, yeah, she has two a, a and TikTok hound, page. Has, has like 25,000 followers, so that's cool. Also oh, happens to be my awesome. ex-wife and father of my children. Yep. Nice lady. Um, yeah, we got some uh, cool people coming up. Uh, beyond that, we'll have some. Uh, we'll start to bring in some of our um, bigger media people, just because we didn't want to have them on before we have everything streamlined and you know yeah, felt comfortable yeah. on you know doing what we're doing. I think we're on to something at this point, and, and, and that could change. But you know, we're uh, <laughs> you know. We, uh, have you uh, have you noticed like an uptick in, in view, uh, listeners? Or, oh uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks for yeah. yeah. Hold on a second. Let me pull this up here. I had this. I was going to go over it earlier. So we have we have people in Frankfurt, Fort Lauderdale, oh, nice. Florida, Springfield, Illinois, New York, New York, Simpsonville, South Carolina, Bamberg, Bavaria. Ravine, Ravine, Ann Arbor, Michigan, High Springs, Florida, Hugh, Ohio, maybe that's Sherry listening in, Orlando, Florida, <laughs> Tulsa, Oklahoma, Los Angeles, we have Glendale, Arizona, Gatesburg, Maryland, Dubno, uh, Rovinsinka, Oblast, Central Islip, New York, Springfield, Massachusetts, Darien, Illinois, Dakar, Dakar, San Fernando, Espanola, New Mexico, Kensington, wow. New York, Ashburn, Virginia, Rolling Meadows, Illinois, Ottawa, Ontario, Montreal, Quebec, Brecknell, England, uh, Berlin, Land Berlin, Oxnard, yes. California, Yorba Linda, California, Fort Worth, Texas, Irving, Te- there's other ones in between, I'm just, uh, we have Norda, Uttar Pradesh, we have Brampton, Ontario, India, right? yeah, Largo, Florida, uh, Pachuca, Hildaldo, Georgetown, Tennessee. Damn you, lag, mother. <laughs> Atlanta, Georgia, Tampa, Florida, Aurora, Kirkland, Marietta, Georgia, Santa Rosa, New Mexico, Scottsdale, Arizona, Albuquerque, Cleveland, Las Cruces, New Mexico, Racine, Wisconsin, Clive, oh, Iowa. Um, yeah, so we, you know, the only, um, the only population we haven't hit yet for some reason is South America. We have zero viewers there, but we've we've hit everyone else. And wow. I would say right now our viewers are mostly between uh North America and Europe. Europe is yeah. a is a third of our listeners. Oh shit. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you for our friends in uh Germany, shit. Bavaria and beyond. Uh France, nice. Netherlands, uh you know Ukraine, Canada, Germany, Indonesia, Damn. Senegal, Italy, Mexico, no, Norway. Yeah. No idea. Absolutely. And uh awesome. Yeah, so the I mean the more we do it, you know, the more you know, now that we're on a normal schedule, our our views are basically tripling for like each episode. Awesome. Cuz what happens is someone will see the this one and then they'll go and Listen to Watch the others. two or three more below that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see too when we switch over to video. See if that also. You know, well, yeah, because we're also going to be you know. live streaming, so we'll be getting different. We'll be getting Facebook live, YouTube live, on the yeah. websites live, plus people coming back and listening to it as a podcast. And so, yeah, it's going to be. Right. You know, we're working on it, but I have to have yeah, a. Man. I have a few projects coming out that I have to get done by uh, December 6th, so those have priority. Uh, sure. The Book yeah. of Vito Bupkis and Reboot Jesus, and that'll be out on vaudevillepress.com. And then uh-huh. after that, uh, 
you know, have a couple of months to uh, focus strictly on expanding creativity talking uh, yeah. before uh, you know, Prophets of Chevelle in June. You know, I was listening to uh, Woke of the Worlds, and that got me thinking, too, you know, like, or, you know, some sort of storyline, maybe do something else in that vein, too, down the road, you know? I'm open to anything, man. Yeah. We got that. We have the we have the technology. We do, and then you know, like I said, like you know, talking about like, like we have a George about you know bouncing off each other. Yeah, you know, we wrote that that screenplay. I mean, that that could work great for all sorts of shit, you know. Oh, for sure. And like, what would be really cool is like at the end of every episode is to basically have a jam. Oh yeah. At some yeah. point, you know what I mean? Whether it be right. re- pre-recorded or whatever, da da da. Yeah. But. Yeah, totally. uh, you know, George is like, okay, I'm getting off the phone. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, I'm going to get, get you. Get off. Yeah, the only guests were like, okay, I'm going now. <laughs> right. Like, oh, George, what story did you think we were going to tell, bro? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, lo- I'm totally lo- joking. Because there is no mystery, big, bad George story. So, <laughs> But, uh, no, George is great, man. we got to totally have him out again. And what a fun yeah. living situation that was. Holy shit. Oh, yeah, dude. And you guys brought up some shit that I had completely forgot about that was funny, man. I, you know. Like what? Just, uh, oh, just little shit. Even like like you busting my balls about mom. I forgot about that. And then there was uh, <laughs> uh, the fact of uh, how George came to live with us. I forgot all about that, too. Yeah. Yeah, I completely blanked on that. Yeah, that's right. He was going to be out out in the street. I think I came to you, didn't I? And I was like, hey, man, this guy's, you know. Yeah. Oh, no. You, yeah, no, no, you, to told, no, you yeah. totally big man did. You, come, you came up and you're like, dude, I know you don't like this guy. Yeah. You know, and you're like, uh. But, you know, I'm like, oh, Jason fucking had the balls come up to me. And, you know, I'm like, I don't yeah. want that guy to be homeless. I was homeless. It sucks. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. fuck yeah. I- you know. See, I had tried completely forgotten about all of that. I was like, oh, yeah, sorry. No, right. at that point, like, if you vouch for someone, you know, okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, Jorge. You know, but, man, yeah, what a... fit right in after a while. Oh, my God. After, like, fucking... <laughs> Dude, by day three, we're fucking laughing, fucking dancing. Oh, my God. Yeah. Dude, so, yeah. so funny. And, uh, you know, and you remember that North American hat he was wearing? Like, I, I fucking wanted to crack up when you said that because I completely, I, I instantly flashed back. I'm like, oh shit, that's right. Right. With the he fuck, had that yeah. beat up hat, man. Yeah, the, oh, no, 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 no. I think it was a camel hat with the North Easter moving t shirt. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, my God. Because I remember him from the video being hammered and, like, tipping up his hat off at, like, 20 degrees <laughs> fucking west, you know? I'd love to see those videos again, too, sometimes. Oh, dude, I, you know, I've, I've looked and looked. There might yeah. be one, but I don't have a VHS anymore, so it's hard. I, I mean, I still kept, like, yeah. a bunch of boxes of that shit, but... Right. You know. That's good shit, man. Oh, my God. So, yeah, dude, that would be a hilarious fucking uh, reality show. Oh, you, yeah, You, totally. me, and Jason fucking, or you, me, and fucking Jorge in a fucking cabin for three weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that we're older and shit. Oh, you know? exactly. Get out of the toilet. I gotta take a grab. Ah, come on. <laughs> what the hell oh, did shit. you eat? Jesus Christ, there's a thing called poop spray. What the... <laughs> <laughs> Dang, man, you been eating your Beano? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I don't feel good. Here, have some 666 cold preparation. <laughs> right. Oh, dude, I was laughing. I woke, too, and you, you brought Muskie's voice in, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah. Yeah. <laughs> Muskie Mills. Yeah, and Muskie Mills. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's fucking awesome. Yes. Yeah. Well, for one, I was sitting in my pooping chair. <laughs> dude, I almost fucking died laughing recording that line. The fucking oh, I bet, dude. I brought my dude, It came out so good, though, man. Really, no bullshit. It came out fucking great, and like the sound effects and shit. I mean, it was on point. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it was all you know. The sound effects was me just going and then putting in a robot voice. Okay, you know. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah. that was good, man. All the writing was great too. You know, I mean, just you know. 
Yeah, I changed like 90% of it. Yeah. I have a highlighted version, and uh, I just basically kept the tempo and the way that they were talking, and it wound up being like 15 minutes longer than the original version, but, man, yeah, whatever. Right. But, yeah, uh, that was good stuff. Yeah, so the next one is the, uh, I don't know if it's called Christmas A Carol, or A Christmas <laughs> Carol, or uh, Christmas Carl's, but it's going to be a play on, uh, it's a parody of A that. Christmas Carol. And it's going to have to do with dealing with three X's with the same name. What the hell is that? Is that the government talking in your ear? Yeah, my daughter's asking me something. What up, yo? Vince says hi. She said hi. Okay, so... Absolutely. Okay. Happy holidays yet to be, everybody. This is your pal and friend, Vito Bupkis. I'm finally releasing the book, The Book of Vito Bupkis. I've been sitting around, which in a way kind of makes sense, you know. I've been sitting on it. Each chapter is specifically designed to accommodate the average time it takes to uh, take a crap. A publication destined for toilet tops everywhere. Right along with me, I discuss all type of topics which have people shorts in a fucking bunch. You know what I mean? Uh, it's the number one universe record holder for the use of the F word and its derivatives in a published work. The Book of Vito Bacchus. Ebooks and author signed copies available soon on vaudevillepress.com and vincentcustos.com and coming to Amazon this December. Jason, how's it going, man? Awesome. Right on. So, yeah, that was a good one. So, people, we're going to, we're going to, moving forward, we're going to get into video and we're going to just start doing live streams around uh, Thanksgiving-ish. And, uh, you know, because it takes the caveman a while to figure shit out, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. As uh, I say, this is it only took me the past three years to figure a bunch of that shit out. But you know, I gotta make a little fun. technological. Gotta make fun of Jason because uh, you know, um, yeah, dude, it's weird. You know, being older with technology, it's like <laughs> it is. It's like I built million dollar studios now. I can't dude, figure out the TV. You know? I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> right. You know, and the thing for woke of the worlds, the thing that took me four days to fucking figure out, dude. I feel like a fucking complete idiot. Fucking wow. I was like, get the fuck. I didn't, and I knew it was going to be something totally stupid. Right. You know, like the concept was there. I just didn't do the, you know, number 99. And I'm like, son of a bitch. Mm, yeah, but there's all kinds of little pitfalls like that with that stuff, you know. Oh, for sure. So the next yeah. one, you know, I'm going to do it a little differently. But uh, yeah, for sure, man, that was... Uh, Hilarious. So, thank you for your review of uh, Woke of the Worlds. Oh, yeah. No you problem. Know, it was the, fantastic. Uh, hey, Biff. Oh, yeah. So, uh, how'd you like your acting debut in uh, Woke of the Worlds? Wild game something to do on Wednesday, you know what I'm saying? All right. Well, uh, you seem to do pretty good. Oh, yeah. So, uh, can I take the other booze out, or is uh, George and Jason about to go on? Just George. So you can bring out the cheap beer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, shit, that was funny. But, uh, anyway. So, uh, yeah, Jay, uh, hang on the line. And, uh, you know, when you think back in your life, and you're an older person, let's say, think back in your life, the college days, and everyone could probably relate to this episode pretty deeply if you went to college or you moved away it doesn't have to necessarily be college but when you break away from home and you have like this incredible set of roommates that you know was life changing and you base all your roommates after that and even your spouses in some cases <laughs> on how you can like talk to people right 
Absolutely. And so it's like, it's like the pack mentality, right? You get your pack, you know, and you get out there. And, yeah. You know, you find your next groove. You know, and uh, in our day, and we still continue, you know, the, the badge of honor was how how much you could bring to the game of giving someone shit. Oh, yeah. You know, and it wasn't mean-spirited. Everyone's doing it for fun. No one was insulted or needed a safe space, for Christ's sake. Right. But, you know, in the middle of the night when it's 3 a.m. and you're trying to figure out how to get the next booze run or the next run for something else, and you're with your buddies, (laughs) and you come up with these elaborate schemes, what's going on? That's just creativity talking. Thank you for joining us for episode 115. Jason, you want to say goodbye? Good night, everybody. And we'll see you next week.